Should I do this update or is that stupid? Don't update, yo! What up, twerking? What up, beef members? It breaks online. Is this is this death? Should I just not? Let's just see if I can get away with not doing it. But if I wanted, to, if I die in DS3 and I jump into Bloodborne, I'm gonna have to update. It's gonna be an issue. All right, I won't do it. I won't do it. No. How's everybody doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Ah, Phoenix, thanks for the prime sub, you fucking angel. By the way, this is Holger Sukai. He was in the band Can for a long time, which is one of my very favorite bands. Krautrock stapled that band. If you don't know where to begin with Krautrock, I'd say begin with Can. If you don't know where to begin with Can, I'd say go to Tago Mago. You won't be disappointed. They fucking rule. Who are you wearing? Oh my god, this is a um, Psychic TV shirt, which is another crazy band from, um, from, uh, I don't fucking know, guys. All kinds of crazy music. All right, I quit game and I did not do it right. Shit! Anyway, Paratarian, what's up, dude? Good to see you too, man. Uh, T-I-J-J, how are you? I see you. PS5 pre-orders were up last night. Did you snag one? Holy shit, no. Where do I... Where, oh, where do I snag? St. Mark's, what's up, dude? What up, Keegan, Keegan Arkist? I like that. Jerry Seinfeld's here. Oh my God, I'm such a huge fan. Uh, what up, Arswani? Jurassic Pork, what up, dude? Fox Alpha, what's up, buddy? Uh, it's fun. I feel like it's like all my, all my friends. All my friends are here. Zach has been making it so far in the no death. All right, well, I'm, 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 I've got, I made some decent progress yesterday. There's no death. Strange Kitty, what up? Crippled Panda, good to see you, my man. Dr. Darren, hello. Uh, Thundermats. Uh, yeah, dude, you did. Thundermats, you did. Um, okay, so let me first, first things first. Check it out. By the way, my homie Derek, who's Lunar Elephant, I don't know if you can see it, gave me this thing. So now I can like, I can like jump around. I can see shit. It's easier for me to do this stuff. So I want to see this PS5, PS5 pre-order. Is there anywhere? Is there fucking anywhere? Uh, how far are we in the game? We're, we're like, uh, we're not that far. We're not that far, guys. I'd say we're like a, a fifth of the way through. Um, search history league now, dude. Oh, hell no, dude. I'm going to continue with my ad blocker. So fuck you. Amazon Prime. I don't know where to do this. Somebody whisper me if you have a link. I'm, can, I, can I not waste everyone's time doing this and you guys can just whisper me if there's a link? How about that? Um, I think we just beat tree nuts. I think you're right. I think that's exactly right. I think I just beat the tree. I think I'm done with the uh, that level, right? I have 2,000 souls. That's probably not enough. That's not enough. I think it's time. Oh, but I think I have my denial in order, right? So that's pretty cool. Oh, wait a minute. Oh shit. 16. What do I what am I at for faith? 15? No. All right, so I need to get 2 G's worth of souls. Maybe I have it. Hell yeah, that's exactly what I need. Oh no. Is this going to be enough? Let's find out. Anyway, can you turn your mic up? You bet I can turn my mic up, brother. If that's what you want. Hey Zach, do you fuck around with magic souls? Uh, I, I don't know what that means, so I'm gonna guess no. Uh, I'm playing now too, if you need help. You, I, look, I desperately need help, 500 more. But uh, this is gonna be an offline run. I mean, look, I want more than anything to have my homies, Rangina and the others with me on this. I feel like it would boost my odds considerably, but Welcome. I think it would diminish my self-esteem. So I, I really wanna get this done like this. Like offline, like just me. But yeah, I appreciate the offer. Zach, did y'all record Buckers and Myers yesterday? Pork sweats. Yes, we did. Uh, it was good. It was funny. I had some issues with the episode, but I'm not going to vent them to you people. I'll let you decide. Okay, so somebody else. Come on. I can't believe I just died right there. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm giving this game 30% of my brain, and I need to be giving it 100%. That was fucking bullshit. 
Uh, let's go beat Bloodborne, dude. Hang on, let me go get the disc. Somebody else, somebody else, anyone else want to come disagree with me about The Shining? Stephen King is the definite hit and miss. I can't do Bloodborne today, wrong star. That's okay. Ron Gina, are you here, dude? Um, um, download Neo? No. Uh, poll time for who should go on the debate. Zach remains undefeated in online debates. Green Mile is great. Okay, I, uh, what up, Spaceship Trucker? What's up? I'm so annoyed. You know what, dude? I'm sorry. I'm gonna wait. If Wrongstar can't do it, Ron Gina can't do it, I'm just, I'm just so, why did I die there? Why did I fucking die there? Ah, oh, it's just so annoying, man. Like, those guys, ugh. That's the second time I've died to one of those guys. You have a retort? Dr. Darren, are you kidding? Go to, go to the waiting room. Tell me what I'm missing. I got Dreamscape in here. Is that you, Dr. Darren? Tell me your name. Uh, I would also, here's another thing. Here's, here's a movie I'll debate, and I know someone's going to feel passionately about this. I don't like the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, but I especially don't like Dark Knight Rises with the Heath Ledger one. I think it's a bad movie, and I feel like I could, I could argue why. So uh, Dreamscape, I'm going to pull you in. Hopefully you have something to say that is pertinent to what I'm talking about. Uh, let me know. What's up, Dreamscape? What up? You hear me, Zach? I hear you. What's going on? What's going on, big man? What are we talking about? Uh, room 237? We can talk about Room 237. I love Room 237. I actually know the director of Room 237, Rodney Asher. He's you, fucking awesome. Can you provide a little bit of light into what that was supposed to be then? What do you mean? That what's, what's that was supposed to be? What do you mean? Well, so we're talking about, just to make sure, we're talking about like the documentary Room 237, right? It's yep. Like 40, 50, okay, cool. Um, so when I first saw that movie, I was pretty young, and I was like, wow, this is some of the coolest shit ever. When but you first recently, saw Room 237, you were pretty young? It came out like six years ago, right? Oh, is that right? I mean, I was- I like, mean, it's not that old, but okay. I was like 18. All right, <laughs> good, like good. All good. Now. All right. Um, uh, let me think for a second. So room two three seven. I was like, this is the coolest shit. Like you're, in my mind, it was like confirming everything that I'd always felt about The Shining. But recently, I saw a video online that says that a lot of it was like bullshit. And I can like provide a specific example off the top of my. That head. says a lot of room two three seven was bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, I think that's. I think though that even Rodney Asher would agree. I think that movie, the premise of room two three seven, is not saying look at all these true conspiracy theories embedded in The Shining. It's saying, look at how The Shining has inspired, has inspired all of people. these conspiracy oh, theories. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm so down with that. No, no, no. Yeah, so which is cool. Like, it's, it's a fascinating movie for that reason, you know, because it's like this piece of art has inspired the imagination of all these people in these, these and interesting ways. Incredible ways. Totally. Like, I mean, my favorite is the NASA thing, right? That's what's so cool. The NASA thing. You want to yeah. delve into that for a second? Remind me. Yeah. So for people in chat who don't know what we're talking about, first of all, there's this documentary called Room 237, which is the room in the it's in the pretty, Overlook Hotel that the it. ghost lives in. And the, the most, to me, most interesting conspiracy theory that that documentary puts forward is that The Shining is Stanley Kubrick's secret confession to having <laughs> faked the moon landings. You know, the story goes yeah. that NASA wanted to fake these moon landings so that they would win the Cold War, you know, via spiritual victory with the American public. And they needed a filmmaker that was capable of pulling it off. So they contacted Stanley Kubrick and he agreed to do it. But he was riddled with guilt about it, and so he built his secret confession into the film The Shining, and there's clues all over the place. For example, Room 237. That's not in the book. But, but it's the moon, supposedly 237 miles exactly, away. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. There's other things, like Danny Torrance is wearing an Apollo 7? What? I, you know, forgive me, which Apollo, Apollo was it? Apollo 11, actually. Apollo 11. The actual Apollo 11. That's right. One that, and it's like the whole thing. So there's that part where he rolls the ball Yes. Uh, he's like playing with a bunch of trucks that are all set up in an octagon. Right. And he, the ball rolls towards him and then he stands up. And like one of the biggest points in that documentary, Room 237, is that that's like symbolizing the, the takeoff of the actual Apollo 11 because the, uh, the launch area of it was uh, rectangular, like in actuality. That's right. right. But you're, you're forgetting one of the most crucial details of that moment, which is that the ball rolls towards Danny Torrance in perfect alignment with the psychedelic geometric rug, right, on the carpet. Exactly, exactly. And, and then there's a, 
cut to another angle and it's very clear that now the rug is different, right? So the rug what? is like, it's like a, it's like a, it's a mistake, right? Except there's one thing we know about Stanley Kubrick is that he, he does not mistake. allow no. mistakes. He was no, so no. meticulous. The hair standing up on my arms, I'm so passionate about this. He was Dude, so insane. meticulous about every prop in the background. The labels of the soup cans had to be facing the right way. You know, he would never allow a mistake like that rug. So people contend that that was him saying, pay attention now, not just to the movie, but what's going on. There's a mistake, Which? Apollo 11, room 237, moon landing. And it's a, it's a very interesting point. It's incredible. Like, like yeah. when I was saying, when I first saw that, I was, like, blown. I was like, this is... <laughs> I mean, that rumor has been floating around that he did that. And so when you finally find that and you see that he supposedly planted all that evidence in there, like, mm -hmm. it's truly a shock to the system. Like, yeah. Some of the coolest shit I had ever seen as a kid. Yeah. And, uh, you know, being, like, Trevor, like, in the conspiracy theory and stuff, like... Wait, I what other theories just... did that movie posit? I remember the Native American one. Uh, so I don't remember uh, which was like, a cool one. theories, but I remember there was this one specific, like really old dude, and like it sounded like he was in like his sixties or seventies. He kept talking about how Kubrick had superimposed faces into the sky. What? Do you don't remember that? No, I don't remember that. Yeah. And what well, scenes? What, what scenes? Made... So it's the scene he he supposes that part of the scene at the very beginning of the movie when it's like the huge flyover of like the gorgeous lake and all that. Somewhere in there is a, uh, fuck, it's a picture of, am I allowed to curse on here? I'm yeah, allowed dude, to curse Dude, are you allowed to curse on here? Give me a fucking <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> uh, I can't remember, I think it, he either supposes that it's Kubrick's face. Oh, my bad, my bad, I'm getting caught. He either supposes that it's Kubrick's face uh, that is superimposed into the sky or I think um, Jack Torrance's. I can't wow. remember which one it is, but, but that was like one of the main points that that YouTube video I watched later hit on to make me kind of reevaluate that whole movie. Yeah. But I mean, looking at it the way that you like, just kind of looking at it, not as a bunch of things that are meant to be true, but a bunch of like, a, just a bunch of the way that it makes people think. Like, that's yeah, so exactly, cool. exactly. What do you, let me ask you, what do you think about like, so specifically, like with that scene with the Apollo 11 sweatshirt and mm -hmm. like Danny standing up, like that's pretty wild. And Kubrick had to be aware of these conspiracy theories at the time. Do you think you? He's, like, I would think so. I would think people? so. People, what's or that? Do you Sorry. Think he really? Do you think he's fucking with people, or do you think he really did it? Like, is he just trolling us? <laughs> is he like playing with that? This idea. Okay, that, so like, my supposedly I could do this thing, and my best guess is that there's no there there. I, I, look, I don't believe that Kubrick faked the moon landing. And, and here's, my, here's why I, Zach, don't think that. It's because my grandfather is a man named William Taylor. He was in the Army Corps of Engineers, and he actually worked at NASA. And he was one of the scientists who was, like, was uh, on the team that designed the lunar module. And, oh, and he, you know, he blah, blah, blah. So he, he was very much, in, in fact, I, I even think that there's a, there's a man in the control room in the film Apollo 13 that is probably portraying my grandfather, but I'm not sure if oh, that's true. That's, that's so cute that you that, that that's how you like look at it. Well, he was yeah, he was in a wheelchair. He had polio, so there's a guy in the room that's like oh, got no gray shit. hair and is in a wheelchair. And I was like, is that oh, fucking pops? God. I don't know if Dude, I'm right about that so or not. Cool. But anyway, so here's I mean, one day I was also in my in my younger days very conspiracy theory minded, and I right. asked my grandfather one day. I was like, I was like, tell me the truth. Did we really go to the moon? Is there any way that was fake? <laughs> And the, the, up, you the withering look that he fucking gave me of like, I, like he couldn't believe the idiocy that I was just It was just like all, he, all of the work that we put yeah, in. You're really he was like ask me this question devastated. Right now? And in that moment, oh I was like, God. obviously I'm wrong. So I personally do not believe that. Uh, I'm, no, I, I think I'm we went to the moon. I think, we went, I think moon. I think we went to the moon also. Yeah. When I first heard about all these like Stanley Kubrick conspiracy theories, like it's so much fun. It's hard to not be like, well, I mean, look at 2001 and then look at the actual space footage. Like 2001 looks more like the actual space footage that we get today. Like it's it's truly insanity. Man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he could <laughs> if he wanted to, he could have pulled it off. There's no doubt about it. You know, Trevor, Trevor for a while straight up didn't believe we went to the moon. 
He thinks it was fake. Now Trevor's current thinking is that he's come around a little bit. Well, he thinks we went to the moon, but we did it before it was aired because God what? forbid uh, oh, shit, it didn't work. The American people idea. wouldn't have been able to deal with it. So he thinks that like, you know, we did it. It was taped, and then we just showed the tape, you know, a day later on TV and pretended it was live. Um, that's, that's not like incredibly. That's not really that out there to me, just because that's one of the things that I always like when I think back on it. That's one of the things that I think about the most. Just like, how the fuck do we get live TV to the moon in the '60s? Like that. That's one of the most unrealistic parts about the whole thing for me. Like, I have no problem believing that we got. But you know what? It's it's so funny because these sorts of things that people like have an issue with. Like, if you were to make your mind up because you couldn't, you couldn't, you not a scientist, figure out how we got live TV to the moon in the '60s. Like, dude, just do a little bit of research and you can find the answer because they did do it and it did work. You know what I mean? And that's That's I'm not criticizing you. I'm saying my beef with so many conspiracy minded people is that they just like the their imagination reaches its limits. So they decide that it must be true. And And it's it's like, dude, just expand your knowledge a little bit and fucking open your mind up and, and you'll see that there's stuff that you don't get. That could be true, you know. So this is this is super relevant to me because my dad is actually a flat earther, which like and, it's funny because people in chat are already talking about flat earth right now. So yeah, keep going, keep going. No, so um, my dad actually is like the guy who inspired me to get like really into space. Like he showed me two thousand one when I was young and stuff like that. And so it's always been something like I don't know about me and my dad. But so recently he went like flat earth, and he's very deep into it. So he's into this idea of a firmament which is that like he does not even believe in space anymore. Oh my god. So that dude. like it breaks my heart for one. It's but. sad, right? Cuz I'm sure that your dad is a decent person. You he's know. A re- he's a nice guy. He's not I, I, stupid I'm sure or anything. It, he just he falls asleep to hours and hours of endless conspiracy theories on YouTube every night that are all self-affirming. Like what else yeah. is going to happen to your brain? Oh, it's God. scary shit. It's really but scary. It's really fucking scary. It's really scary. Shit. Yeah. And and the Man. thing that I I think is that like these people I think that they get into these rabbit holes, not out of any sort of logic, but I think there's like an emotional need that is being filled by this sort of thinking. I think it's it's coming from a place of emotion and like, I think oddly fear and anger push this sort of logic more than anything else. And it's weird because on its face, you'd be like, well, how does a flat earth fe- theory in any Make way more comfortable. validate fear and anger but i honestly think it's because you found a worldview that is not allowed you're special you you know something exactly. no one else knows you're special you, you know what i mean and I, that's yes. what i think and i could be wrong but that's that's what my no gut tells i me. mean i hate to say it because it's about my dad but that's like the thoughts that i've had consistently is that it's just it's it's almost like a mental superiority thing like i'm into something that other people aren't you know yeah and, and the truth of the matter is if you expose them to the valid argument on the other side it wouldn't be a contest it's not an it's not up for debate you know like we can prove uh, mathematically beyond be. a shadow of a doubt that the earth is round but there's my, a selective my too far decision gone, though so yeah. many people are too far gone it's yeah. heartbreaking man my dad thinks that footage of space right like where you see astronauts around all happens underwater he thinks it's all filmed down here somewhere and it happens underwater he's always showing me these videos where it's like no no no, look look, look those are bubbles right there those are bubbles oh god and i'm like i'm like yeah whatever man. it's like people it who say so like the stars are twinkling so therefore, that's atmosphere that makes the stars twinkle. There's no atmosphere in space, so that the stars would be constant. They wouldn't twinkle. It's like, dude, what, do what, you know? what dude, you're, you're not, not taking you're not, you're into not account astrologist? is the camera technology was not perfect, and the camera has like electrical fluctuations that makes everything twinkle a little bit. The stars are just like more. It's you know, and but now by by going down that logic rabbit hole and trying to argue them on their points, you've already kind of lost because it's not logic that that matters to this sort of person, you know? No, not at it, all. It, it really is. They will overlook so, yeah. so, so many things to affirm. Yeah. Truly, it's like very um, I was initially like... By the way, hang on. Dr. Darren, I know this isn't you that I'm talking to, and I, I will pull you in, dude. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm enjoying this conversation, so don't, don't worry. You're coming in next. I'm enjoying this. Yes. Oh, by the way, my name is Zeke, and uh, oh, Zeke. used to really piss me off when people called me Zach. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, no, it's cool. It actually changed because I knew this douchebag named Zach in school, but you're a cool Zach, so okay. I don't hate it anymore. All right, good deal. Uh, <laughs> um, my dad, though, I had one more thing. Okay. Um, so it started off as, like, 
I think it's healthy to have some hesitance about like the things that you're presented. Like, you know, you don't want to just look at everything. Skepticism is wonderful and we need more of it. I agree with you. Maybe not more of it. We have an awful lot. No, nowadays. I think skepticism I mean, would, people, would, would go a long way in uh, a certain... In just the average person. Yeah. I think we need no, it. No, I could, I could see that. I think it, it's, it's just a huge unbalance. There's people who are way too skeptical, and then there's people who are not skeptical at all. Well, there's a selective skepticism. You know what I mean? And, and both, both sides of the political divide suffer from that. That's but, but yes, new, and we won't go, right we won't go deep into politics. But yes, selective skepticism. Um, it, I think it's healthy to definitely have that skepticism. But mm -hmm. at a certain point, you're ignoring what is it at this point? Like hundreds of thousands of scientists and, and people who like are working to get this information and and get more about this information daily. And mm -hmm. you're ignoring it for what? Like some weird YouTube videos? Or I know. Like some oh, online? dude, that's like what just, that's what drives me the, the most crazy. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Dude. It's great. Numbers are against you. And it just and to it, me, it, it's like, OK, dude, here, here's what I feel like every conspiracy theory boils down to. It's like if you was, if let's assume you're right. Let's say the world is flat. So that means every educa every higher education system in is just in about line. every country in the world is they're all in on it. For what? I don't know. I don't know how they benefit from this. There, but they've all done it and none of them are leaking and they haven't for the past exactly. hundred years. Like you fucking exactly. that is so loony toony. Like <laughs> that that's what you have to believe. You know, you oh can't if you're gonna if you think the earth is flat, then you have to believe that. Tell you, me if I'm wrong. If, some, if there's a flat earther in here, dude, you're next in line. Please. Oh, my God. If it. there is one, get yeah. in here. Get in here. All right, buddy. This was great, man. Thanks for, thanks for coming in, Dreamscape. Thanks for having me, man. It was All a right, pleasure. Dude. Later, my man. Take it easy. All right. Hang on. I got Choom. Griffin, I'm pulling you in, my dude. Dreamscape, pulling you. Dreamscape, I can't seem to pull you out, so I'm going to ask you to disconnect yourself. I can't, I can't pull you out. Griffin, you in, you in there? Hey, hey, what's up? What up? What am I getting wrong, Griffin? You're doing it right. All right. What oh, wait, I'm still in. Dreamscape. Yeah, yeah, still. yeah, Dreamscape. I don't know how to, for whatever reason, I can't kick you, so kick yourself. I can do that. Okay, thanks, buddy. Oh, huge fan of these death runs. Huge fan of Conspiracy Corner, Conspiracy Boys. Good deal. Um, uh, oh, uh, I, I guess I wanted to just piggyback on the last thing that was said about why people believe conspiracy theories. I do a lot of uh, research into QAnon. Um, oh, in fact, that's, I was... that's the worst. That's my least favorite conspiracy theory, but keep going. Oh, oh really? <laughs> I, I loathe it with a burning passion. Yeah, I mean, I've heard you talk about it before. In fact, I was actually at the, I was at the QAnon rally outside Netflix just oh. the other day, oh. um, just to check it out. I didn't even know that existed. Um... Yeah, well, 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 Netflix, because of the movie Cuties, um, everyone came out to protest the movie and say netflix is like endorsing pedophilia or whatever um and so like these guys get really activated and netflix is like a new stage for all sorts of protests because it's like it it sort of exemplifies what hollywood is yeah, um, sure fair okay but uh but they, yeah they're 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 turned up and and i think no matter what conspiracy whether it's flat earth or QAnon. I think it's all just really a result of people being incredibly isol isolated, being incredibly like lack of community. Um, and I think that as we just live these just like hyper capitalist lives, it removes any sense of community or family or sense of belonging. Or meaning. And that's, or mo and meaning. most important meaning. I think people feel like yes. they have no purpose or meaning mm -hmm. in life. And if you're suddenly yeah. a crusader against a pedophile, you know, sure. cabal of the elites, Suddenly, mm -hmm. waking up in the morning every day, you've got a purpose. And that purpose is right. to spread the word and bring about the revolution. And that's valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, people need that. It's just sad that, like, I think it's an indictment of, like, of the United States of America in 2020. And that, like, 100%. nobody feels like they have anything to do or they, have, they serve any purpose in our society. Totally. And it, it's heartbreaking. And that's, that's the sickness that, that this is the symptom of, in my opinion. Yeah, and so it's like, rather than, like, me going to every QAnon commenter and being like, you're stupid, you're sick, or whatever. Which is not like, we productive, right? Not productive. Like, we need to be building um, communities and spaces where people find meaning um, so that they don't fall down these like rabbit holes um but especially i think what makes QAnon sort of op or overpowered is that it's happening in the present like mm -hmm. for instance flat earthers or like jfk being shot you can only experience those conspiracies by 
hearing and reading about them. But with QAnon, it's DIY. You can be part of it now. You mm. can decode the conspiracy. You can decode the proof. And you can become part of it in a way you could never become part of something like JFK or the moon landing or anything else. You have You are writing the history right now. And that's what makes QAnon so, so, I guess, activating for people. Yeah, that's the appeal. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, um, dude, thanks for coming on. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Wait, wait, Griffin. Great. You still there? Yeah. How do I yeah, kick? Yeah. How do I kick people out of the uh, private chat? Like, you, just, how do I, you, just drag, you just drag them out. But I wait, wait. I'm trying to drag you out. I can't. Oh, last thing though. Last thing though, Zach. But we, I do we want to play Warzone some question. morning. What's that? Let's play Warzone some morning. Yeah, let's do it. Wait. But I'm totally down. How do I drag you out, man? I'm dragging you. You're not leaving. You literally. Okay. No, I'm then literally we'll, doing I, we'll, we'll fix that later. <laughs> okay. All right. Later. Um, all right. Who's next? Wait, wait. Fox Alpha. Well, I want Dr. Darren to come, but I don't know what his name is. So what's going on? Right click move to. Okay. Got it. Thanks, dudes. Um, let's go. Fox Alpha, you've been in here. I want to find somebody that hasn't. R4 Fonz. I'm going to pull you in. What's up? All right. R4 Fonz, what, what do you think? What's going on? Oh shit, what's up man? What's up dude? What do I think about what? I just got back from the restroom. <laughs> oh no, well then I'm booting you buddy. You gotta have, you gotta have a hot take. You gotta be ready. Oh yeah, all right. I'll all catch right. you later. All right, pull yourself out. I, apparently I can't do it. There we go, thanks. All right, uh, Green Arrow, come on in. Tell me, tell me what, what am I getting wrong here? Whoop. There we go, Green Arrow, what's up? How you doing? What's up, man? Not too much. Two what's seconds. your hot take? What, what what's going on? Talk to me. So I uh, I went to see the Dark Knight. Uh, oh, we're okay. Here we go. Here. Dark Knight, love it. Let's go. And I agree with you. Um, I I went. I saw it in the theater five times. I saw it on. Uh, saw it in the theater you know, five like times. Jesus Christ, dude. Well, I was I was still in high school. It was like my uh, I think junior year. Okay. So uh, it was you know everybody was talking about it all summer. So had to keep on going, keep on going. But um, by the fifth time, when you've gone to IMAX twice and seen it on like a big screen, you kind of pick out every single flaw with it. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm interested to know what, what your gripes are with it first. Okay, well, first of all, it's, ve it's a very cool movie, right? I mean, yeah, it looks sure. amazing. There's some incredible action in it. Heath Ledger is miraculously good, right? I, I, it's, it's, it's definitely... Like, I was saying yesterday that Mark Hamill's the best Joker, and I, I don't think that's really fair. I think Heath Ledger's probably the best Joker. I, I like Mark Hamill because I feel like he nailed the traditional Joker better than anyone else ever has. And, and I mean, was, the range with him, too. He's gone all the way through all the Arkham games. Yeah, dude. So and the, it, honestly, I feel like the, the Arkham Joker games is, like, my favorite Joker. Like, that's the shit. Yeah. Like, it's perfect. Um, but, you know, Heath Ledger... I. I I don't think you can understate how great he was as the Joker. I'm, I'm, I'm on board, okay? And I feel like for, sure. for that reason, there is value to The Dark Knight Rises alone, just because it gave us that performance, which was just so good. However, as a screenwriter, as, as, as you know, somebody who loves to think about movies you know, structurally, The Dark Knight Rises is a mess. And, and, and I can prove it with one question. And here's the question. You've seen this movie five times. Tell me in one sentence what that movie is about. You've seen it five Let's times. Tell me what it's about. Uh, uh, Batman tries to stop the Joker, uh, who is a new criminal on the scene in Gotham. But the, yeah, but that's then a pretty. The, that's actually the, better than I think most people could do, and I think you actually did a great right. job. The, and you're right. You're. I think the you're movie right. Is all Two Face, which. Right. From what I understand, was supposed to be its own whole movie. Yeah. Here's here's what I would say, and this is after doing a lot of thought on this. I would say that my sentence to describe The Dark Knight Rises would be, the Joker tests Batman's moral commitment through a series of increasingly high stakes challenges. You know, Thanks. culminating in the barges okay and that's being incredibly generous to this movie because here's the problem with my here's my main problem with the dark knight rises there is no third act there is no third act to this movie it is just a rambling thing the 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 two barges one with the criminals one with the um the citizens 
is like that is not a bad guy's close in moment really like we've already he already blew up a hospital you know what i mean right. like it's there's nothing there's there's no new development here as far as i'm able to see and it's really about like is batman going to use the nsa powers you know to morgan freeman's you know disapproval <laughs> is he going to like become as much of a villain as the joker will the joker finally win okay it's but funny like, because i completely forgot about the the whole thing with the cell phones and the sonar that's the whole like, point of the movie about, like that's yeah, the whole it, point I of knew, the movie as you're saying it i'm like oh sh- uh, like ugh. <laughs> and it's weak dude it's weak and the joker you know like he's hanging from a fucking he's hanging upside down outside the skyscraper that's the last we see of him i i just feel like it's it's just a woeful if it didn't have heath ledger and it didn't have the budget that story if you read that script i guarantee you you would be bored and confused i i agree with you all right somebody in this chat so, doesn't agree with me and i want to hear from them one of the one of the things really quick okay. um, it's just the dark knight dark knight rises was like brain oh th- thank you thank you i got it wrong i appreciate it no worries okay. all right good deal but all right, anyways buddy. Good talk uh, to you. I'll uh, pull yourself out. out. I don't know how to do it. Okay. I'll uh, I'll I'll do. You, you, I, I trust that you're gonna figure it out. Okay. Who who dis- who disagrees with me? Who's got a real hot take? Tell me, tell me uh, what your name is in the um, crazy saxophonist. And crazy saxophonist is a good arguer, so he's probably gonna give me a real run for my money. All right, Green Arrow, get out of here. Get out of the fucking thing. There you go. Crazy. How you doing, Zach? What's up, dude? Uh, so I will admit, first off, that uh, Dark Knight is not the greatest rendition of Harvey. Of Harvey? Hello? Did I lose yeah, you? Of, of Harvey? Yeah, no, sorry. I just had to... Of Harvey Dent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, sure. I, I, so I agree. My, my beef with Harvey Dent in Dark Knight is that he's kind of an unknown to Bruce coming in. We're meeting him through Rachel who is also kind of an awful love interest. Um, but <laughs> I agree. Historically, Harvey Dent is one of Bruce Wayne's best friends, and that's why it's really fun in like the animated series to see the development of Harvey Dent from the DA who Bruce Wayne trusts to the villain that Batman has to face. Mm-hmm. But more than the Joker, Dark Knight is about Harvey Dent. And that's it true. is about that's his true. corruption. It's mm-hmm. about the corruption that we're seeing with Two-Face versus Batman. And I don't think that the movie does a good enough job of really contrasting the two throughout. Now, I'm going to be very, very generous to, to the Dark Knight right now and say that they're telling the Harvey Dent story intentionally to parallel that with the moral conundrum that Batman is facing. Harvey fails. Harvey buckles under it. Batman does not. Right? So that's... I, I think you're right in that it's a parallel. And I think that Harvey eventually goes too far because his notions of fairness and justice are predicated on only that which he can control. And we see that mm, with the what coin a great that he point. has. What a great point. Yeah. The coin that he has where he's strictly cheating. Every single time he asks somebody, you know, I'm going to call it, I call heads. Oh, look, I win. He's not used to giving up any form of control. So when the Joker forces him into these positions where he is powerless where he is unable to save himself or Rachel, where he can't tell people where he is, he can't direct them to go save her instead of him, and inevitably she dies so that he can live. The dude fucking breaks. And I like that's it. where he starts getting this 50-50 mindset going. You know, you know, there, there's no you know, fate, there's no chance, it's just the coin decides for you. Hmm. Well, and yeah, I think that's a, I think, but I think that is like actually a satisfying character arc that you're describing as you're criticizing it. Like, I think that's pretty. That's a pretty decent story, right? I think you it know is what's, a You story. know what? Can I, I be really I, honest and for a moment? I'm actually kind of turning myself around as as we're talking about this. Where I'm like, maybe it's not such a terrible movie. Um, but keep going. Keep I, going. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify here, and I, I just want to point out. I entered the chat because I am a huge fan of The Dark Knight, and I think it's a good movie. Okay. I don't think it's the best take in some regards. And again, you know, I I think that Harvey Dent could have been done better. I think it would have been much more interesting and a lot more fun to see Harvey Dent as Bruce's best friend if we had, you know, an opening scene where we got to see them chatting at a restaurant, you know, and then Rachel walks in. 
mm -hmm. think that would be more interesting than you know Bruce and Rachel are talking and then Harvey enters the Why picture. do you think they made but the decision to to jettison that aspect of their relationship? Because it, it is you're right, it is a very compelling fundamental thing in the lore up up until that point. So I why strictly, why wouldn't they I do that? I think it's strictly because Rachel was present in the first movie, and Aaron Eckhart wasn't. Uh, wait, wait. Rachel is played by. Rachel, the, the actress for Rachel switched between the first and second movie, okay. which is why I said Rachel, not uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal in the second. And gotcha, I gotcha. Wait, remember, who played her in the first Elizabeth movie? Elizabeth Holmes? Elizabeth Holmes, I think. Let me Katie check. Holmes? Katie Holmes, you're right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think Katie Holmes played her and then Maggie Gyllenhaal. Okay, got it, um, got it. And Aaron Eckhart did so well, by the way, I think. Sure, he's a great, uh, he's, he's good, yeah. Um, all right, all right. Any other points you want to make before... Uh... I pull someone else in? Uh, no, um, I would be down to talk Dark Souls lore. I will ask if you check Whispers. I sent you some chat commands you can make so that we can give people links, and we might even be able to start a uh, run attempt counter. Yes. But uh, other Dude, than that, I will pull myself out. Wait, crazy. Out. I, I don't know how to do that shit. Will you? Are you? So uh, I, I sent you a couple Whispers. If you if try I mod you, them, can you do it, or can only I do it? Um, you might be able to do it. Uh, y you can definitely do it. If you mod me, I might be able to. I asked uh, Lunar Elephant, but I haven't heard back yet. Um, I'm just going to mod you right you now. If you mod I'm going to mod you right now, and you shot. just tell me if it works. Okay, don't fuck anything up right. with the mod. All right. Mod <laughs> the, All right, and I'm gonna the pull out crazy of chat saxophonist. All right, set, up, set, those, set those things up if you can. Sure thing, mate. All right, buddy. All Later. Right. Thanks, man. All right. Uh, Seinfeld. Let's hear from Seinfeld. Seinfeld, I'm a huge fan. I can't believe that you're in my chat. It, it means a lot to me. What's up, man? Oh, I can't hear you, dude. Hey, what's up? Yo. Sorry, I'm, be I'm, uh, I'm behind on the stream. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You got to mute the stream probably, yeah. 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 How are you? Good, you? What are we talking about? Oh, no, don't, not, don't. What are we talking about? You got to have the hot take, man. We've been talking okay. about The Shining, Dark Knight, Conspiracy Theory. Well, get... let's talk about... Uh, horror movies then buddy you're this is too vague you gotta come come at me with something all right i didn't come with something just boot me boot I'll yourself leave. boot yourself all right slumlord I failed <laughs> seinfeld don't be mad at yourself it's all good buddy i still love you slumlord you're on what's going on slumlord slumlord you're in the thing all right buddy I wish I knew how to boot people. I would just boot this guy right away. Maybe I can send him back into the waiting room. Oh, that's how I do it. I just send him back to the waiting room. Fuck yeah. Wait, Green Arrow, did he already come in? He did. Ralph? Ralph, what's up, man? Oh, uh, what? I got to turn you off on the uh, Twitch. Hold yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I think this Sorry, is probably the last call I'm going to take because I want to get back and talk to chat, okay, chat here style we are. for a little while. Here. But yeah, okay, what's up, dude? I'm here. Okay, I agree with you that The Dark Knight has an Act 3 breakdown. Thank you. I think it's partly it's too long, but I think that as it is too long. character exploration as a character exploration of the Joker, I think that it kind of serves a, a good purpose. And I'll tell you why. Okay. So Batman represents order. Joker represents chaos. chaos Two right. very primal, primal fucking things going on. Okay. The way that Joker creates chaos in the world is through just a, a cycle like a tornado. It just keeps on whipping up more and more destruction and death and violence and confusion and suffering to the people of the world, right? Okay. Okay, I agree. So, you got me so far. I'm with you. So Harvey Dent and Batman and Commissioner Gordon, who's a total punk in that movie. Total punk in that movie. Yeah, total punk. Gary Oldman, oh my God, makes all the, the worst choices. Okay. And anyway, I'm kind of kidding. Um, so their, their deal is justice. You commit a crime, we investigate, we arrest you, you go to trial, you get found guilty, you go to jail. Boom. It's a very ordered thing. That's how the uh, the comic books are ordered as well. There's a problem, Batman comes and solves it, and it's a very structured thing. 
This is one thing that Alan Moore talks about in The Killing Joke, actually. Which is, which, which is like, probably the best Batman story ever told, do you, do you think? Um, I've got my problems with it. We can talk about that some other time. I love it. Okay. Look at you being economic with our time. I appreciate this. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, the plot structure where the third act just turns into more chaos that becomes more personal is more in line with what the joke would want the movie to be. Whereas if it was just your classic three actor, you know, it's it's not chaotic enough. So can you I repeat agree. that again? Can you repeat that sentence again for me? I, I think I was I, I, I think I lost you one more time. So the structure where it just gets so chaotic that people are forced to make very personal choices mm -hmm. in order to avert suffering. Mm -hmm. That's more in line with what the Joker would want the movie to be. Rather what the than, Joker would want the movie to be is the sentence that's confusing me, but keep going. A movie about the Joker is going to mimic the Joker's psychology. Good. Okay, so the movie becomes about the Joker in the third act okay. because of the way that he is kind of eschewing the classic three act structure. Uh -huh. So what the movie, what you want the movie to be is a classic three actor where you get some fucking closure, you know, right? Like Law and Order. Yeah. But the director isn't allowing you to get that. He's just gonna, he's gonna tease you like a fucking bastard. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is that? Wait. Are you done? Is that? Is that the point? Yeah, I'm saying for a, a movie that is kind of about the Joker, the structure serves a certain purpose, which isn't necessarily bad as you make it. So you're saying that it's almost like an adaptation where like the movie is intentionally subverted to not have a standard structure because it's about chaos and chaos wins so yeah. we don't get a third act? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's so, I think that's a cop out, man. I think that like, you know, you can explore those themes and still satisfy the audience with a decent third act. That's, that's my take. So I, 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 I take your point. I don't agree with it, but I think it's, a, I think it's an interesting point nonetheless. Sorry, you would agree that the writers have exhibited the ability to write a third act before. I don't know, man. Like I feel like Christopher did. Nolan is shit that, look at, you watch Dark Knight Rises and tell me that that guy knows act structure. That movie is a fucking disaster. Horrible. Oh my God. Do you fucking disagree? Hate. Do you think Dark Knight Rises is good? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's that good. I think it's okay, but you know, there's a lot of pretty girls in it and. A lot of pretty girls in it? Okay. And I like things like that. Yeah. All right, dude. Uh, I think you make a good point. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks, buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull you out. All right. Uh, all right, chat. What do we think? What do we think? Hey, by the way, I see Jerry Seinfeld. Don't be mean to yourself, buddy. It's all good. You didn't know I was just kind of like in a, on a tear here. You didn't, you didn't do anything wrong. Um, who's being mean? No, no one should be mean. Zach, having a third act is conformist, you poser. Sure. I want it to be. Um, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. So what's up? What's up? Zach is a, I'm a jerk? How's I jerk? You didn't think that Nolan isn't the type of director to make a chaotic ending like that? I guess so. I just don't think it's a good ending. Michael Keaton was the best Batman? I totally agree. I totally agree. Fuck this Twitch stream and fuck Zach. Okay, cool, St. Mark's. Get the fuck out of here. Go watch something else. I know, by the way, I know that you're referencing our sketch. Zach, I'm going to contest you on better Batman stories next time. All right, twerking. You talk a big talk. Um, they were knee deep in the franchise's ability to do well, so they wouldn't let Nolan take risks. I don't think I agree with that. He did take risks. Zach has probably seen more movies than anyone here. He has the upper hand on criticism. I don't, I'm sure that's not true. Um, Zach, I just watched the It Was Pretty Good sketch. I don't even know what sketch that is. What sketch is that? Where Trevor's like, it is pretty good. What is that? I don't even know what that is. All right, Zach, the payoff was that people proved Joker wrong. Batman didn't win the fight the people of Gotham did. That is such a cop-out, dude, because you're building your whole movie. We're here for two and a half hours to watch Batman's character development, and then in the end, his character development is, is irrelevant because some other character, the people of Gotham, had the moral strength to defeat the... the no, I... I well, Ron Gina, tell me why I'm wrong, but I, I, I don't, 
I don't agree with you on that one, man. Um, I'm going to pull in Sir Siren. I don't know if you haven't been in here yet. Sir Siren, what's up, man? What do you think? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, what's up, man? What am I missing? Can you hear me? I hear you, yes. Okay. Well, this is Rabbit. What? This is Rabbit. Oh, Rabbit. Okay. This is Rabbit. Everybody, this is Rabbit. Holy shit. So, this is amazing. All right, but buddy, get closer to your mic. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. This is the Rabbit Man. Amazing. Hold on. I got a freaking... I got to mute the Discord. I mean, I got to mute the... By the way, of course you're difficult to hear. Of course you are. It wouldn't okay, be any other now? way. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you still sound kind of kind of distant, but okay, it's fine. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, let me switch to something else. Then. All right. You know what, man? You you do sound really rough, actually. Can you? I don't know what's going on with your audio setup, but um, I'm gonna give you ten more seconds, and then and then I'm gonna move on. But I want, I do want to hear from you, so I would just say, like, figure it out offline and then come back to me. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, way better. There you go. Yeah, what's up? Okay. I had to switch to just my phone. Cool. I'm, 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 I'm freaking driving right now. Anyways. All right, well, be careful, dude. No, I'm pulling over. Uh, so anyways, um, okay. So you so, sound like a normal person. You don't sound like uh, an insane maniac. That all sound like me a little bit like... <laughs> okay, there's a little weirdness. You're getting a little weird. Yeah. Right. The point is, okay, here's, 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 here's what a lot of, I think a lot of people are overstepping or under looking at, not just in the conspiracy aspect, but in the Dark Knight thing. Like, I'm not saying that the Dark Knight was, you know, any of the movies were like spectacularly amazing and had to be like, you know, accepted as gold. Uh -huh. you know, it was just Christopher Nolan's take. But the, the thing that I think that people are missing about conspiracy theories and this is that they're confusing the word chaos with anarchy because even in the movie you know joker says you know introduce a little anarchy mm -hmm. and people lose everything in your mind you know? what is the distinguishing difference between the words chaos and anarchy why, why is that okay. an important distinction because as a chaos theorist are you, you know, a chaos I, theorist yeah of course you are of course you okay. are and as a chaos theorist, the thing about chaos is it's not about, you know, people going crazy. It's just about there's there's no specific correct order in disorder. You know, if I have a list of things to do from one to ten, it doesn't mean I have to do one first, then two first. I could do five and then one and then eight. Oh, wait, hang on. Let me not die. All right. Hugh Niceman, Hug Nice Man, whatever the fuck your name is. What's up, buddy? Wait, did I not get my good shield? Here we go. Hugh, hug. All right. There we go. Hello. Oh, what's up, dude? Me? What's going on? I realized I might have set. Uh, That's muted. all good. I wanted to convince you to watch the old Godzilla movie. The old Godzilla movie. Like, which one are we talking about? There's many. Showa era. Showa era. The originals. Like, what year? Like, 94 through 75. 90, so, going backwards. Okay. Yeah, and we're, yeah. we're talking, well, like, the black and white Japanese movies. Yeah, yeah. Up until, like, Mecha Godzilla and all that. Have you seen any of those? You know what? No. I think I saw, I think I saw one when I was a little kid. Dude, they're amazing. Really? I thought, yeah, you brought it up uh, at one point that you weren't a huge fan of Godzilla. The new one sucked, like bad. Well, you know, one of my one of my very best friends is uh, responsible for the last one, um, which <laughs> oh, is sorry, fine. Sorry. Which is fine. <laughs> By the way, like I, it's, I, I'm not a big fan. The it's newest okay. one I do like. I just didn't like the one where uh, the guy from Breaking Bad died. Can't the guy from it. Breaking Bad. Who are you talking about? The older guy from Breaking Bad. I can't think of um. Who, who played, like, uh, the... Why can't I fucking main remember guy. his name, dude? Yeah, me neither. Hank? It's the main guy. Hank? I don't think it's Walter Hank. White? You're not talking about Brian Walter Cranston. Walter White, yeah. Yeah, Brian Cranston in the 2014 guy. Oh, I don't think I saw that one. Okay. Yeah, that one started off good, but once Brian Cranston died, it was kind of, eh. And the new one, 
is good with the monster scenes. I just think the story was kind of lacking. But mm. the old ones is where it's really amazing. Okay. Like the uh, Showa era and the Heisei era. So the Heisei era would also be like the 90s one. Okay. All right. Not, not the American one. You know, I'll check them out. I would recommend going and checking those out. They're yeah. amazing. And is there, has there been uh, Godzilla versus King Kong? That, that exists, right? Yeah. That's the second movie ever made. Oh, third movie. Like, okay. Yeah. All right. And and you like I that would, one? That's amazing. Okay. Yeah, but I would recommend going back and watching uh, Terror of Mecha Godzilla and then Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. I think okay. those are two of the best. Or right. Mothra versus Godzilla. Okay, I'll check them out. All right, buddy. Yeah, you got to check them out. All, All right. right, man. Thanks yeah. for the rec. All right, later, dude. Yeah. Okay, cool. Talked about that yesterday. I'm just like curious of like, how does the crow hold up? I didn't even really like the crow when it came out and I was in high school. I was a high school boy. I was the target demo for that movie. And I remember thinking in high school, like, this is a little extra. I didn't use that word because that word didn't mean anything at the time. But I was just like, this is like for dumber people. This is, this is for people who like wrestling. And I'm sure a lot of you guys love wrestling. But for me, I was just like, wrestling's corny. The Crow's corny. Uh, Zach, and I know people are like, I fucking love wrestling. Fuck you, dude. And now I think I would probably be able to appreciate the corn. You know, now in my, in my you know, later adulthood not that i'm old but I, I do feel like i can let shit go and just enjoy campy things for being campy whereas back then i was like no nah, lame corny uh yeah superhero for goth kids have you read the comic of the crow i think i did in high school i think i did yes thoughts on this film on the film sphere um no i don't think i've seen it you prefer tv shows or movies i don't, I don't fucking um, huh? Thoughts on Watchmen? Um, very, very great comic book. Into it. Um, I'd say deeply flawed movie, and I'd say pretty great TV show. That's my thought. That's my that's my nutshell. Watch MacGruber again, dude. MacGruber's the greatest. You don't have to tell me to watch MacGruber again. I do actually believe that, and I don't like Kubrick's movies. Okay, dude. I'll bet you also don't like the Beatles. I bet, I bet you're really interesting at parties. Ooh, I almost died right there. Hang on now. Hang on now. Let me handle these witches. Have you seen Knives Out? Yeah. B. Paul McCartney was overrated. Oh, my God, guys. Give me a fucking break. Um, does Dr. Manhattan hang dong in the TV show too? I think he does. I don't remember, but I, I think so. Uh, we need more creative ways to get Zach to think about the lighthouse. Yeah. Do you watch any DC animated movies? You know what? I should. I should. I don't, but I, I bet I would like them because I love Batman stuff. Oh, yeah. If you know, you can't make it good. Let's pull somebody else in. I love talking to you guys. Okay. Ah, hang on. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you, dude. All right, Dreamscape, you've already been in. Uh, oh, Rabbit. Rabbit, let's try you again, dude. Rabbit, you there? Yo, I hear you, man. Are you there? All right, I'm going to give Rabbit 20 seconds to figure this out. Rabbit. Hey, what's up? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? Are you okay? What happened? Did you crash your car? No, I have my Discord for some reason. If I'm not, my TV, my, I mean, my phone's jacked up anyway. The point is, anyways, was I making sense? Did yes, you dude. I was, I was actually praising you after you got disconnected. No, 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 no. I was parked. I just, my Discord's jacked up, so. Oh, no, no. Dude, mute your Twitch. You're talking to me in the past. Okay, okay, okay. All right, anyways, as long as I was making a... a as long as you could understand him, yeah. what I was trying to verbalize. I, look, I thought you were making a great point about the chaos versus anarchy, but I don't quite see how that makes the movie good. Well, no, I, I, like I said, I, I, I think you, when I, got, I might have got a cut off at the end, but the point was I was trying to make... I, thought, I didn't say that made it a good movie. I just made it a, a little bit misunderstood, as, you know, about what chaos and what anarchy is in accordance to what the joker was trying to put forth in that movie okay fair like i said i didn't make it, it didn't make it a great movie it no it, it certainly you know, didn't no you know it, it just it's a misunderstanding but then i was trying to correlate that and kind of like draw a line to uh 
conspiracy theories and what people think about those and how it you know the the subject and the mind of thinking that people have around that you know and and if you think of it in a philosophical way the way that the mind works and the way that people understand how things work if they don't understand how it works they're either going to hate it or they're going to make up their own truth right and that's how people cling to a misunderstanding or things that may or may not be true because they're, they're, they don't understand either how science works or how truth is is filtered through you know what actually happened because when you talk to people that have been through traumatic situations like i have you know or, or you study them you figure out that people even if they're all in the same event or if they're in a car crash let's use a car crash as an example uh-huh they're in a car crash they're gonna say okay well i got hit and you're like yeah of course you got hit by a car but what happened before that and then it's going to be this tangled story of what what was occurring but then you have to as a as an investigator you have to try to figure out okay were they uh were they being like were they neglecting what they were doing were they distracted or did they just get hit by somebody because of uh, their uh, somebody else's name? you know rabbit i i can't help but my imagination as you're telling me all this is you're using the car crash as an example because 30 seconds ago, you got in a car crash because you were talking to me on Discord, and you're walking away from flaming records with a bloody forehead, like, making this point about, about Batman on the side of the highway, and there's, like, sirens passing because I'm hearing all kinds of beeps and boops. It's like, dude. Anyway, I know that's not the case, but it's very, it's, it's, it's very funny. It very well could be. It could be. We, it could we, be. Uh, yeah. The, um, um, like I said, it, it's, it's. People stumble in their their mentalities because, or the way that the the way that um, conspiracies work is because it's not that it necessarily fits a truth that they're willing to accept. It's that they can fully understand how that may be an operational, you know, thing that's occurring, because they can't understand how science works. So they 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 naturally try to figure out something. Even if I know you said you did the the Bigfoot thing, and you can see how people can break down. A, a subject mm -hmm. and to very like from the beginning all the way to the end and to them it makes sense because it's this reproductive thing that they built in their mind right or that somebody explained to them so they can explain each step you know and that happens in, in any kind of theoretical or any kind of thing that people have in science or even non-science things like belief systems like religion if they can read it in a book or somebody can explain each step to them then they're okay with it but when there's an, a missing gap well, they say, well, that's based on faith. I can't understand that. Right. You know, and so they, they, they cling to a to a, a conspiracy faster because somebody can explain each step. To them. Right. Yes. I think you're actually making a, a, a very lovely point. And I think you're I think you're right. I totally agree with you. And that's it, how and, and like conspiracy theorists make sense of a very complicated world in a very simple terms. And and to my earlier point, they, they're applying meaning at the same time. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. And, and see, that, like I said, that's why when when I see something and people understand that I'm a chaos theorist, but I, I also teach martial arts at the same time, they say, how can you really balance chaos and, you know, teaching someone to be innerly balanced when you don't want to take step one through two through three through four through five through six? It's like there, there's a, a subject of balance that has to be in balance at the same time. You know, so you have to understand that there's in the world there's not always going to be complete balance and the way that you balance it is by not creating your own order because that's where you start getting into conspiracies and militias and people going off the rails yeah you have to create something that's going to work for you but you don't have to indoctrinate others with your ideology right so you know, if it works for you and you don't hurt anybody that's fine so, so Rabbit, let, let me just ask you a little bit about you, just because you're 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 probably the most fascinating person in this chat. You teach martial arts, you're a chaos theorist. But can I can I ask you just a couple of personal questions? I won't go too deep, but I, just just if if you don't mind. Sure. Where do you live? Um, I uh, I live in Texas. You live in Texas, okay? Yeah. Are you like Austin? No, I, I live in Central Texas. And and how old are you, dude? Um, I, I I like I literally had to be told this by my wife because I I don't really pay attention to that type of thing. My wife was like, "Wow, you turned 38," you know, a couple of days ago. I was like, "I did," you know, because it was funny because like a, a couple of weeks before that, I sat down with my brother and my grand my grandmother and uh, my aunt, and they were like, 
my aunt broke it down. She's like, yeah, he's going to turn 38. I was like, I am. And my brother was like, how do you not know that? I was like, why would I pay attention to something like that? Like age, it's not so much. I'm not one of those people that date like a 21 year old and I'm like 65. Right. You know, thinking that it, there's no difference. It's just when you focus solely on your ideology of age makes a difference, then you dispel all rumors and dispel all ability of people to have any age. There's people that, that are like eight years old that can play the piano better than anybody in the world. But they like, well, they're eight. They got living to do. You know what I mean? That doesn't make, it doesn't make, it only makes sense to people that focus on the ideology that age makes a difference in everything. Mm hmm. You uh-huh. know, but it does in some aspects, I agree. But, you know, like as far as like buying a gun or renting a car or something like that. But, you know, it, other than that, you know, it's just, it, there's, there's, there's a lot of responsibility when it comes to age, like getting a job, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't, to me, like I, I just turned 38, but it, I've never really paid attention to that. Type of thing, yeah. Um, you know, I was really asking your age, just because I was hoping it was going to inspire you to give me an answer similar to the one that you just did. So yes, uh, that was awesome. Um, all right, dude. I think you're a very fascinating guy. I wish that uh, I wish we could have dinner and I could just pick your brain about all kinds of things. Um, thanks for being here, dude. No problem. All right, buddy. Come back. We'll, we'll do this again. All right. Keep hanging out. Like, we'll talk about more shit later. Hey, hey, if you want, if you want, Zach. Yeah. If, uh, if you want, um, I do have some very, you know, uh, loose views about uh, political ideology because I don't vote. I never have. That doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, let's, I'm, I'm not opposed to getting into that, but I'm going to take a politics break because I feel like I, I need it for my own mental and spiritual yeah, health. I, I'm fine with that. Like I said, I, I wasn't asking to dig into it now. Yeah, yeah, I, just I know. Like I, I, I tune into everything you guys do, so. Well, I, I would, I would absolutely, believe me, I would welcome that discussion uh, when the time is right. So I, I'm, I, I'm down, man. I, I think you definitely have, uh, I think you're going to have a fresh take, buddy. So yeah, let's do that. I'll talk to you later. All right, buddy. Later. Hang on. Let me not die to this fucking guy. Hold on. I'll pull someone else in in a second after I fucking deal with Pinky here. Have I told you guys how much I hate this dude? Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Is that it? I think I might have him now. Got him. Uh, that was good. All right, all right, all right, all right. Who else has not been in here yet? Lurking. Hang on now. Okay, we got lurking deep here. What's up, Todd? Hey, Zach. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm good, brother. All right, I'll have you gotten you right over? Now. Are you are you past your whole tremors situation? By the way. Anyone in chat doesn't know. So we raided Todd yesterday, and it took him about 20 <laughs> minutes to say that he thinks Tremors is the best movie ever made. And that Dude, I, I'm wrong for not agreeing. Uh, yeah, sorry about that monologue, man. It was a little bit fucking That's drunk. all good. That's all good. <laughs> Uh, well, first off, dude, I am not as interesting as Rabbit, man. That guy is a ripper. Well, that guy's a that guy's a miracle. And uh, yeah, he's a ripper, man. Yeah, dude, but, that uh, guy's awesome. I was gonna ask, dude, what is uh like? Do you go to metal gigs? Like, what's the coolest metal yeah. gig you've been to? Yeah, I go to a yeah. lot. Um, yeah, cool. Well, not man. a lot. Sweet. I mean, like, dude, I don't go to that many shows. Like, I actually don't like going to concerts anymore. I will every right. now and then. Like this year, yeah, I saw yeah. Power Trip live. I don't know if you know that band. They're fucking great. Uh, nah, before, I'll check them out though. Check them out. Power Trip. Yeah, Listen sure, to the album sure. Nightmare Logic. It's phenomenal. The, the singer died like a month ago, which breaks my heart. He's a young guy. Oh, no he's, way. he's awesome. But anyway, so yeah, I saw Power Trip and then I saw Gate Creeper this year. I don't know if you know them. They're cool, good. Cool. Um, yeah. But no, like, dude, when I was in high school, I would go to two punk shows a week. And, oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, and I, would, I was always going to shows. And now I just feel like I hate crowds. Obviously, with yeah. COVID, that's you know none of this is even an issue, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I just I fucking hate crowds. My I don't like standing for an hour and a half, and also I get I got fucking ADD like a motherfucker. So unless it's like literally my favorite band, I only want to see three songs and then I want to get out of there. Every concert, in my opinion, is too long. 
Yeah, I can feel you on that, yeah. man. I can feel you. But metal shows are like the legit shows, man. They're so fucking fun getting in the crowd. And oh, the energy. Gnarly. Yeah, dude. I, oh, I, I love them. Yeah. I love them. I'm, I'm with you. Hell yeah. yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, so what's your? What are your metal bands? What do you love? Uh, I like uh, like Cannibal Corpse, Black sure. Dahlia. I've seen. You know, seen chat both has been twice. talking about Black Dahlia. I don't know Black Dahlia. They're pretty dope, man. Uh, you, you might not like their newer stuff. They've got a newer album out called Nightbringers. It's it's all right, man. Their older stuff's good. Uh, okay. like between between the Buried and Me. I don't know if you've ever listened to them. I've heard of them. I don't they're know pretty, them. They're pretty dope, man. I've seen them. Um. Uh, I got to fucking see Tool uh, last year. I don't know if you're a Tool fan. You know, like, I'm not. My, so good. I'm friends with this comedian, Rory Scovel. I don't know if you know who that is or not. He's, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the biggest Tool fan in the world. Yeah, yeah. And he toured. He, he tailgated yeah, them and did like that. a tour. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you saw that. I saw that. And I, I, I think, think I'm not on, sure if uh, I'm right, but I, I think they might have even let him come out on stage at Tool shows yes, they and did. open. They did. They, they hung out with him, didn't they? They got to like just, they set up all their shows with the tool shows and then like got it they got backstage passes and everything that's very how cool. fucking rad is that's that man they got cool. to go to dinner and shit uh yeah, yeah it's fucking badass yeah he, he he's then, uh, obsessed hell yeah dude and what else was i gonna say dude the state of horror today man i fucking cannot stand the state of horror movies today it is tell so me why because that's funny because i feel like there's some really great horror movies coming out these days uh, dude, to me, it feels like high school horror movies. It's well, like fucking shitty jump scares, shitty fucking demon possession bullshit. Wait, wait, like wait. You, Have you seen Hereditary? Yeah, that was good. I was going to say that's the last good one I've seen. What but did you like, think? Yeah. Well, Get Out was awesome. Get Out shreds. Yeah, yeah. Get Out was good, man. I'm just talking like... You have all these like stupid demon possession ones where you can tell from the first 10 minutes of the movie where the entire movie's gonna go. Mm -hmm. And it's just filled with these stupid jump scares to make people jump in theaters. And like all the high schoolers are talking about it. It's just so fucking, it's ridiculous. I agree. I do think that, you, you know, I think there's a cardinal sin that gets, that gets broken and, um, or committed, whatever the fucking phrasing, in horror movies all the time and I hate it. And it's when there's a jump scare and they mm -hmm. add, and by the way, Get Out does this, and Get Out is an offender. But there's when they do a jump scare and they add a soundtrack like, like a loud yeah, yeah, piano yeah, 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 bang yeah, yeah, yeah. or something that's in yeah. the score that 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 you're jumping because of the score. I just think that's so cheap. hundred percent. And in Get Out, they do it at the actually. It's one of the worst offenders. And by the way, I love that movie. I think it's brilliant. I, I give it yeah, an A plus. Like but but there's a scene where the maid walks through the hallway, right? At the end of the hall, she like crosses the hallway and, and yeah. he puts this big like score sting on top of it. And you're jumping at the score. He's not scaring you because you know, it's a scary yeah. visual. He's, he's literally just startling you with the soundtrack and it's bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah, it's a cheap trick. It's yeah. a cheap trick. Did you like, uh, did you like Us? Us was all right. I liked it okay. I think that the bar was set so high from Get Out that I was I, I yeah. was expecting something I didn't get. Yeah. Did you see um, the remake of Pet Cemetery? I, I hated it. You, yeah, I didn't like it either. I hated it. I didn't like how they changed. I didn't like the ending, and I didn't like how they changed up, uh, like the daughter being possessed instead of the yeah. kid. Like, yeah. You I know, I don't like even that, remember man. honestly. I feel like I blocked that movie out of my mind. I, I can't even remember. You know, there there are movies like that that I do like, like that are kind of schlocky, jump scare movies. Like, for example, Mama, which is by the director of the It yeah. movies, which I was like, this yeah, is yeah. a scary movie. You know, it, it gave me a lot of jump scares. You know, it's very cheap yeah. and disposable, but it was effective. Yeah. Like, I'm not above those kinds of movies, but I certainly yeah. don't like revere them the way I revere a hereditary or, or you know, that kind of right. thing. You know what? Did you like? Go ahead. Did you, sorry. No, you uh, go. Did you like the... Uh, the new It, man. I thought that was garbage. I thought it was okay, trash. Okay, so It won. Uh, the first one, I was like, decent. I'll, I, I liked it enough to see It too, and then I watched It too, and I thought it was so shit that I walked out of it. Yeah, it's fucking... Uh, again, it's just like high school horror, man. It's just so fucking predictable to me, and like, you could tell where the scares are going to come yeah. from, and it's all like hammed up to like be this, oh my god, it's fucking... It's it, you know? Like, yeah. the original movie was great. The TV series was great. Yeah. But uh, I just feel like they missed the bar so high on that. Like, it could have been... It was rated PG-13. It could have been R. 
You could have rated it R and put in a little bit more blood and guts and made it actually scary for the actual horror fans out there. Yeah, but, but they just like try to sell it to a larger audience. Right? Yeah, I think I think you know it is just one of those movies that's just all about the dollars. You know, they just calculated yeah, like how yeah, do we retain yeah. the audience? How do we not alienate you know yeah. anybody? And you you please everyone, you please no one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I got you, man. I got you, dude. All right, uh, what Todd. Else did you did you like uh, Evil Dead though, the remake of Evil Dead? You know, okay, so it's funny. That's on my list to rewatch. When I watched it, like the year it came out, and I didn't like it. Um, yeah. But then I watched Don't Breathe, and I I loved it. And I and I think that first of all, I was wasted when I watched the Evil Dead remake. So that hell that's yeah. never like a, <laughs> you're like hell yeah, drunk yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's never like that's not a good indicator of whether a movie's. I, I can't make a good determination if I'm like fucked up out of my brains. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I do want to rewatch it because I really like Fede Alvarez and what he did with Don't Breathe. Um, yeah, a hundred percent. And then wait, what did what did he make after Don't Breathe? Didn't he make another movie recently or no? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he did. What the fuck? Okay, so he... Don't Don't Breathe was the the neighbor one where they go into the yeah guy's they go into house. Detroit and they they're robbing yeah, the yeah. house of the blind guy. It was really well done. I thought. Yeah, it wasn't uh, It Follows. No, I don't know what he did. No, he didn't do It Follows, but um, I liked It Follows. Again, I had major problems with the third act of It Follows. I thought that they did not stick the landing, but it was okay because Mm. they did such a great job in the first two acts, and it was such an imaginative new monster. I I mean, so even though I have some gripes with it, I thought thought it was really good. Definitely worth watching. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, good talking to you again, man. What's that? You too, buddy. Good talking to you, dude. All right, man. Uh, Mad love. Thanks for the raid again, dude. You take it easy, homie. You got it, man. Let's talk again. Keep hanging out. Later, buddy. For sure. Later, man. All right, man. Uh, Ben Falvey. Ben. Back again. What's up, dude? Oh, wait. Did you already come on? What did did we talk about? I'm sorry. I I can't keep everyone straight. It's fine. Uh, Dark Knight. uh, uh, All right, so... Bale, Christian Bale's voice as Batman. You mean, oh yeah, okay, yes. Incredibly hard to hear uh, in most theaters. Uh, out of the five I saw it in, like two of them I couldn't hear what he was saying, and I got into a literal argument with my entire family, all of them are older than me, that uh, they said that he said, um, uh, what's his face from uh, the Jay and Bob reboot was in it, and uh, he's wearing the hockey pads, and Batman. Kevin Smith? You know, no, no, no. It's it's a guy at the beginning of the new Jam Bob reboot. I can't remember his name now. He's got a crazy name with a lot of it's something with a D. I have no Anyways, idea. okay. He looks at that guy. Batman looks at that guy, and that guy's like, "What makes you so different?" He goes, and, "I'm not uh, wearing hockey pads." Right, hockey pads. Right. Right. Not, that's what not, I, that's what I heard. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Not hockey pants. No. Like a, that wouldn't make any pants. sense at all. Right. Okay. I'm all right. So. Thank you for that, because <laughs> my entire family, uh, I was still, I was Your like family literally thinks he's saying, I'm not wearing hockey pants? Hockey pants to the point where I had to play it on the DVD when we got it with the subtitles and prove to them that they were wrong, and then they switched sides. They were like, no, 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 you were the one that said pants. And I was oh like, you my motherfuckers. Oh my god, dude. That's hysterical. I'm not so wearing hockey that, pants. There's that one, and then there's another line when, uh, right before Jim Gordon gets revealed, there's a helicopter. And the guy sitting with Jim Gordon is just the most annoying cop in the fucking world for no reason. I don't remember this guy, but keep going. So as they're driving, the helicopter hits a uh, wire in the middle of the, like, uh, hanging between two buildings. And it starts to, you know, get tangled in the wire. And the guy looks up and goes, oh, that's not good. And then it keeps on breaking and stuff like it's an action shot of the helicopter going down. And then he goes, okay, that's not good. (laughs) Okay. It's just the same line twice, and when you see it five times in the theater, by the fifth time, you're waiting for it and, like, laughing. That's so Uh, And then uh, the only other thing that I wanted to contribute to this conversation was that I think Aaron Eckhart was very much out of his depth compared to Heath Ledger and even Christian Bale and, of course, Michael Caine. Michael Caine gets shit on so hard in the third one for, like, no reason. Does he? Oh, yeah. they, They trick him into thinking that Batman's dead and stuff, and he has to cry at Bruce's grave and... Can you imagine that guy takes care of you your whole life and you don't even let him in on the fucking plan? Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Have you seen The Trip? 
the Steve Coogan Rob Rob Brydon movie. It's on Netflix. I've I seen all of those because I went through um, Alan Partridge and oh, just yeah, led dude. me through a rabbit hole. Now you're talking my language. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Uh -huh. But there's that bit in the trip where they're they're doing their Michael Caine impression and they're like, "I will not bury another Batman." <laughs> I've buried eight yeah. Batman in my life. I can't bury another Batman. It's so fucking funny. There's I'm, a new one that came out this year with them. Is it uh, Greece? I, still I think it one. might be Greece or I, I don't know. There's it a might lot have been of last movies. year too. Yeah. yeah, those are great. Um, but the, you know, knowing me, Ben Falvey, knowing you, Zach Kreger, uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, my I'm man. Gonna, I'm gonna leave you to it because right, I, right. I sort of snuck my way back in. No, here, it's so. fine. Later, dude. See ya. All right. Uh, El. Chile Año. Is it, am I speaking to a Chilean? Hello? Hey, hello? What's Can you up? Hear me? Yeah, yeah, what's up, man? Or, or, Sorry, wait. Who, who am I talking to? So, I had to, like, um, mute the stream. I was messed up. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. No, I was just watching on my work right now, actually. But yeah, I'm in Chile. Okay, cool. Hello to Chile. <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna get called on. This is pretty crazy. All right, you got a hot take? You got something you want to talk about? Yeah, have you seen um Samsara or Baraka? I have seen I have seen Baraka. I have seen Koyanesquatsi and the other Kawasquatsi or whatever you call them. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not seen Samsara. Is it great? It's I think it's the best one of the three. Really? And, and is it I shot in it, seventy I, millimeter as well? Yeah, exactly. And it goes to Asia, and it's like 2011, so it's a lot more modern than uh, it was before. Yeah, if, um, so if anyone, did, hang on real quick. So if anyone in chat doesn't know what we're talking <clears> about, there's these documentaries that are like dialogueless. And who makes them? Is it the same guy that makes all of them, right? And I don't know his name. Yeah, yeah, it's like a project. It was like one every 10 years, and then Samsara was like after 20 years. They're, they're absolutely mesmerizing. Um, and I watched it on acid on Friday. That's exactly how you should watch it. Yeah. So if you smoke <laughs> or do shrooms or acid, next time you do it, yeah. watch one of the like Koyana Squatsi, Kaya Squatsi, Baraka, or Samsara. And for all my Mr. Bungle fans, I know there's a lot of people who love Mr. Bungle in this chat. The end of Baraka, they do, they film this ritual of these like, I think they're Indonesian, but I'm not sure. But these, these they're like, Asian, yeah. They're, yeah, they're like these, uh, these holy shaman dudes who do that like and it's like exactly what mike Patton uses at the end of uh that song and it's so cool so uh do yourself a favor watch that scene you'll love it those movies are amazing they they're show great. you a lot of all like, they're great yeah yeah dude. um so if we're talking about movies i don't know if you've seen um the house that jack built or anything else by i have yeah. seen the house that jack built lars von trier uh yes what, what, what do you think of it i thought it was a really good piece on um how art can like doesn't exactly have to be clean. It can be like very dark and very gruesome. I feel like that was a really yeah. good example. I mean, that's kind of a point that Lars von Trier has made again and again and again. And at this point, it's like, yeah, dude, we, we understand. We, we get it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I liked it. You know, I didn't like it until the end. And I don't want to spoil it uh, for anyone yeah, who hasn't yeah. seen it. So I, I, I actually, I'd say like the first 70 minutes, I was like, this movie is fucking trash. And then at the very <laughs> end, I was like, I thought it was so cool what they did. They won me over, and now I, I definitely would recommend it. So yeah. I, I didn't really get, like, I tried to understand a bit of the ending because it's like a bit of open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, I never really got it. I mean, I guess it's not open-ended, but I don't want to spoil it to the people that haven't seen it. Yeah, it's yeah. Really yeah, but it, it's cool. It's a cool movie, man. Yeah. And did guess, you, like, did you see I... Dogville? No, I haven't seen that I, one. You know I what? I haven't was... seen it either, Just, throw, but I, I want to. It's on my list. Um, I think my favorite so far, um, I don't know if you've seen um, Mandy. I think that was really artistic. You know what? I like, tried, dude. Everyone loves Mandy. I couldn't get into it. I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna watch it again. You have to fight through like the first half. Yeah, see, I think I bailed at like the half hour mark. I was like, this is just style over substance. I'm not into the whole like... <laughs> You know, Nicolas Cage, yeah. you know, like, I love watching Nicolas Cage movies. I love his good ones. I love his bad ones. But I just thought that Mandy was too, like, it was too self-conscious of the camp that is Nicolas Cage, you know? And I thought it was like, mm. this this isn't enough for a movie. Like, you can't make a whole movie because you have Nicolas Cage. Like, you have but to... Did you get to the part? Did you get to the part where he screams? Uh, no. I, I, if I did, <laughs> I don't remember. All right, well, that part is, like, when his, like, act starts getting really good. Like, oh. then it's, like, justified a bit. Okay, you know what? I will watch Mandy within a week, and I will report back on, on what I think. If nice, anyone gives a nice. shit. But, yeah. All right, and thanks for the rec, dude. Uh, yeah, awesome. Right, buddy. Thanks nice for coming on. You. See you. Later.
Oh shit. Um, hey guys, let me let me do a poll because I've really been enjoying talking to everyone today on Discord, but I don't know if it's annoying for you viewers. So I want to I want to know if you guys are liking this or if this is fucking exhausting and annoying because I'm I'm more than happy to just hang out and keep doing my normal chat stuff, but like we like Discord convos. Yes, keep them up. No, they suck. Or yes, but in smaller doses. So you guys tell me, tell me what you think. Um, Nightbot is wait. Nightbot isn't still going on, is he? Is Nightbot still on? I I thought I disabled Nightbot, man. I, I I sort of so many times I have like unmodded Nightbot and people continue to complain. So yes, he's still here. I'm sorry. I dude. I don't know what to do. Lunar Elephant, can you can you unmod him? I am I what am I hang on, I'll do it right now. So I go uh, slash unmod space nightbot. And then it says Nightbot is currently not a moderator of this channel. So I don't fucking know I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I fucking hate Nightbot. I'm with you guys. He suck Nightbot Discord? No. It's fucking annoying, right? You have to type commands in the chat. I did, dude. I just did that. And it, and it even gave me the prompt that said Nightbot, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, so, yeah, people overwhelmingly into the Discord convos. Good shit. Uh, Josh is better than Nightbot. I, yeah, I agree. We are so united right now. Nightbot unites us in our fucking hatred of Nightbot. I, I don't know how to kill Nightbot. It was a mistake introducing him into this goddamn beautiful system that we have. All right. Stez. Stez, what up, dude? Hey, sorry, I was on mute. Hey, all, good. Hey, what's up? all good. I, I figure everyone needs to, like, take 10 seconds to fix their shit. Yeah, so. I'll, let me mute the stream. Hold on. There we go. What's up, man? Hey, so I kind of want to just bitch about Christopher Nolan a bit. I'm with right? you, dude. Bitch away. You're in a friend. Uh, You're in a safe I don't space. Know if you, <laughs> I don't know if you talked about it, but him releasing Tenet during the middle of the pandemic. I haven't talked about it. I don't really have an opinion about that. Did he release it or just, not? He did, and I think it's really fucked up. And why? I just, Tell me why. I just, like, it's like, you're in the middle of a pandemic, and, like, I feel like he thinks well, did he release it like, in martyr. theaters, or did he release it? Yes. Oh. He released it in the theaters. Yeah, so it's very, I'm just, I don't really get it, but um, that's, and, yeah, there's the middle, it's like, it's the middle of a pandemic, and I feel like he's kind of taking himself as this martyr of, like, Oh, I'll be first, guys. Like, let me take the blow. And I just, I don't know. I just feel like he's kind of in his own head in that. You, that you very well may be right about that. And I'm inclined to agree with you. But I, I'm, I have this weird niggling suspicion that, like, there's some piece of information that I don't have that would maybe help justify True. this. I, he doesn't yeah. seem like the kind of dude that would just be... What, what the fuck do I know? I don't know, man. Maybe yeah. you're right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, this is all speculation. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm not calling him an asshole or anything. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think it's kind of fucked up that he did that. Yeah, and it's that's also fair. that he also should just release it on VOD at the same time if he also wants to make money. I agree, right? dude. Like, let people watch your movie in safety. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I then there's the whole, like, David Lynch's thing of, like, don't watch movies on your telephone thing. You know, like, uh, I think there's the whole mentality of it. Yeah, but this day and age, no one's going to watch Tenet on their phone if you release it digitally. <laughs> They're going to watch it on their <laughs> TV. True. And by the way, everyone yeah, in fucking America has a 50-inch screen at this point. You know, like, people, mm -hmm. are, let, yeah. let them decide. But I hear you, man. I, I, I hear you. You know, it's funny. Christopher Nolan has made movies I love. I love The Prestige, you know. Yeah. Um, he, I think I've, and I think I'm not the only one, has kind of grown tired of his shtick, though. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of uh -huh. been reflective of his, of his reviews on Tenet of, like, he's not very, he's just kind of shallow. Yeah. Like, everything I'm is really well polished and, like. It's not very thought out. Sorry. I agree. I agree. I, I love Memento. What else did I love? I I, um, I did not like Inception. I'll be honest. I oh thought, really? No. I, I you know when I was in the theater, I was loving it, right? And I, I remember I walked out of the theater and I was like, I'm so glad that Hollywood made that movie. Like it makes me right. like feel excited again that Hollywood can like take a risk on a huge budget movie and like execute it. You know. But I gotta be honest, the more distance I got from Inception, the more I just became kind of like driven crazy by the plot holes. And for a movie that spends two hours yeah. explaining yeah. its own rules, it then like violates the rules at the end. 
And it's like, why'd you just waste my <laughs> fucking time? I'm like, if yeah. you're gonna break the rules, don't don't waste my time explaining them. And I'm also I'm gonna, gonna cop to the like. I can't even really remember what those plot holes are now because it's been years since I've no. seen it, so I'd have to watch it. But they're again. definitely they're definitely there. Every time I rewatch the movie, it definitely goes down like a point. Like yeah. it, it definitely you see the flaws a lot more, which yeah. I've heard is the same thing with Tenet. Is that but, right? Yeah, but uh, I will say about Dunkirk, like it's a fun movie, but you know there's what? no story. I have not the- seen Dunkirk. I, I would really I, I I know that I need to, and I know Tarantino said it was his favorite movie of the last ten years, right? It's just crazy to me. It's yeah. crazy. Well, what do I know? Maybe it is. I, I haven't yeah. seen it. But because um, <laughs> no, you said the Dark Knight Rises was structureless, and to me Dunkirk was pretty structureless. Really? Like, it's just like. There was no story. It was just event after events. Like, there was no story. For me. I think I'm going to die right now talking to you. I think the tree's oh, going to kill me. Oh, um, shit. Hang on, hang on. So I'm going to I'm gonna try and focus on this tree for a moment. I'm out of uh, Estes, and I'm in bad shape. Okay, hang on a second, bro. Um, yeah. But I do take your... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fucked. I think I'm dead. I, I can't believe oh. I'm... I'm I, I'm just not paying attention to this fucking game anymore. I'm talking I mean, to everyone, I'm loving life, and then I'm like getting my ass handed. Hey man, I'm having a lot of fun watching you stream. <laughs> all right, all right, thanks, Regardless dude. of you dying, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. All right, cool. Oh, hang on, maybe I can pull this. Oh, I did it, I pulled it out. Okay, cool. Nice. Uh, nice. All right, buddy, cool, man. Oh right, man, it's great talking to you. I'm a huge fan thanks, of everything dude. you're doing. Thanks, buddy. Later, yeah, we'll man. do it again. Come back. All right, organic leaf blower. Organic leaf blower, what's up, dude? Organic, Can there it is. Me? Yeah, what's up, dude? Yo, what's up, what's up? What's going on? So, my Mike, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's on your mind? What what, what I get wrong, dude? <laughs> Nothing to get wrong. I guess I'm just sort of piggybacking off of what was just said from our previous Bud Stets. Okay. Um, just like about Tenet being in the theaters, mm-hmm. and I saw it was like blockbuster boot movies only in theaters. Wait, I mean, what does that mean? Guess... Blockbuster boot movies? What? No, no. Blockbuster movies only in theaters. Like the big mega studio tent poles. Right, right. Okay. And so, I mean, I'm guessing that's just because of the massive budget and they just want to make some revenue back. I'm not sure... Yeah, I think the calculation they have to make is like, like, do we table it until 2021? But who's to say if even 2021 we're going to be back to normal? So do we wait 2022? And then it's like, has enth- we, we can't market this movie for three years. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, it's, it's a very difficult decision, but it feels like it's a decision that's based 100% on profit, right? Not, right, that's not what I'm saying. Are you just, the public. Is that the only variable then? Is that, well, it's an expensive movie, so we need people to show up and then... So, I mean, where does the risk lie? <clears throat> and then this goes on to like uh, other things. Like, why is it that we can go to movies just so you can make your revenue, but we don't have freedom to go other places? I guess my question is mostly the COVID stuff. And I don't see like an end in sight, but I got a music festival I want to go to oh, next God. year. What, what music festival you know? are you trying to go to, man? I like the summer camp music festival. It's like uh, Chillicoth. It's in Illinois. Okay. It's like an uh, hour and a half, two hours south of Chicago. Uh-huh. It's a four-day camping music festival. It sounds like band, my Blue that's Grab. my personal hell, but I get that that other people like that. I love shit. it. Yeah, that's cool. That's yeah, good. Yeah, but that um, I'm a nurse and an ER in Chicago. Oh, so cool. Like, good for you, man. So tell yeah. me this. Tell me this. So like you're a nurse. So in Chicago, yeah. COVID, right. you know, very concerning, right? It's are we out of well, the, the woods? Well, the best part was COVID think? pay. The hazard pay was awesome. Right. But now that's gone. So now it's no good. Uh huh. Um. No, you know, it's, it's, it's super weird because um, not a lot of us got sick. So, I mean, there was like three, uh, Us being you, other healthcare nurses. workers or us being yeah, Chicagoans? Doctors. No, Chicago's sick. Tons of people sure. in Chicago are sick. Yeah. Um, and we get sick people and like COVID's a real thing. And some people, it depends when they show up. Um, some people show up like really early and it's no big deal. And then mm-hmm. some people show up and immediately you're going to have to like intubate this guy or lady, you know? Yeah. So um, have you seen people in your hospital die of COVID? Oh, yeah. Tons. Yeah. I'm in a trauma one center. So, I mean, we get all sorts of people. Uh-huh. But, you know, like the, the where people say like, oh, well, this guy was hit by a car. So his death was due to COVID, you know. Wait, what? Um, what are you talking about? You, you, you ever hear that? Um, where people will complain that. Oh, um, that they're skewing that the, the numbers? numbers are, yeah. And that 
you're going to say someone died to COVID, even though they were shot like six times. And so what's the, what's your, I've, I've heard that. I haven't heard that a lot, but I've heard people complaining that that's yeah. been done. Yeah. Well, we do test dead people, you know, like these trauma patients and so stuff. Would you test a gunshot victim for COVID after he's dead? Yeah. Why? You'll test everybody. Well, probably mostly due to like, um, organ donation is my guess. Okay. And so um, let's say a guy gets shot in the head and he tests right. positive for COVID, even though the bullet right. killed him. Would you call that a right. COVID death? No, I don't think you would call that COVID related. Um, but so it's not simple because COVID is going to scar a lot of your lung tissue. Sure. Um, as well as cause blood clotting. It's going to change your body and your body's ability to react to certain things. Mm -hmm. So you can say that this person would have had a better chance to survive an injury or a trauma Certainly. if they had healthy organs. That's, right. I understand that. And so you can say that this guy, obviously the car accident was the cause of his death, but you could say that his death was caused by COVID. But I really don't think that's what's happening. I just think that's people uh, combining two variables that aren't really supposed to be combined. You know what I mean? So you, we're, we are testing people. This guy is positive, but we're not testing him to try to blame his death on COVID. Kind yeah. Of. Okay. So, so in your opinion, it's, it's not like anyone's doing any intentional funny business to skew numbers right. for a political agenda, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Not at all. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's interesting though. You know, my brother's in, in EMT in Seattle. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know why I'm telling you that, but I, I, <laughs> I just, I, That's what people do. I'm just saying I, I appreciate what you do, man. I know that it's, oh, like, yeah. it's a heavy job. Oh. It's good. It's a good time. You know, you see a lot of things, but do you love it? It's just, I don't know. Yeah, I love it. But like, um, it's not something I even think about, you know, my favorite part of the job is that I work three days a week for full time, mm -hmm. you know, so oh. I, I work nights. So can I, I be that guy? Can I, can I, for chat oh, yeah. and my amusement, can I ask you a morbid, like, give us oh, yeah. what, is that cool? What, what's, oh, yeah. the, what's yeah. the most fucked up shit that's come through your, your office, your mm, office, whatever you think. call it. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> um so i mean i can't tell tales outside of school because okay, it's fair. illegal you know right, what I mean? right right but um hypothetically i could tell you what i could saw on the news there was something on the news sure you know? um so there was we're in chicago uh -huh. um so you get all sorts of stuff so there was um something on the highway all right my best this is gonna be a story so Love the it. best way to, to describe the two characters involved is the um, victim and the aggressor. Okay. Okay. By so the way, that's the, that's everything in life, okay, kids? That's, yeah. That's right. all of it, right? Sorry, keep yeah. going. You're good. So um, <laughs> the victim was driving next to the aggressor on the highway. Okay. There was a car accident that they saw. And so the victim tried to get out of the way, not to drive straight into this car, and pulled into the aggressor. So now there's a small accident between them. Okay. They pull over. Um, the aggressor gets upset and gets out of his car and starts yelling at the victim mm -hmm. and says, get out of your car. He's super mad at him, you know, and he starts hitting his gun on the window. Scary. So yeah. So then the um, victim says, no, thank you. I would not like to leave my car. Yeah. And so, um, the aggressor then shoots into the window at him, likely hitting him in the chest and then um, down his balls to rip his balls open. And that's the medical then, term, right? Down his balls? <laughs> scrotum, split yeah. his scrotum. Uh -huh. You see people get shot in the balls all the time. That's a, Get out of here. Is it mostly self-inflicted? No, no. Um, and then when you do that, you have to take him to a CAT scan and then you got to put a dye into their penis um, to flush through the system to make sure that their urethra isn't like destroyed. Dude, and then like, they have to how many times have you had surgery. to do that? How, how common is that? Um, I've only been an ER trauma nurse for like a year or less, a little bit less than a year, but probably three or four times. Good Lord. <laughs> I don't know. People get shot all In the time. In a year, you've had to do that three or four times. That's, yeah. that's likely that's... three, but I mean, I can't. Sure. Three, like dude, I didn't remember. If you, you know. told me two, I'd be like, God damn. <laughs> no way. Yeah, no, <laughs> all the time. Um, so anyways, the, um, aggressor what happened last oh so yeah the victim got shot right so um he didn't like getting shot so he tried to get out of the car um getting out of the car he stepped into traffic and then got hit by uh, another car you know so at this point he's on the ground 
this guy's standing over him, like, like yelling at him or whatever. Um, and this whole time, this victim was um, a conceal and carry guy who had not thought to pull out his gun. Okay. So he did pull out his gun at this point and shot this guy in the head. But Killing him? It was enough to, no, he came in through the front door, just like wrapped in a sweatshirt. Where, where in the head did he get hit? It was like a, uh, like the top right of his head. It was like a graze wound. But, okay. I mean, enough to have a bad time, you know? Sure. But I don't know. I thought that was a good one. Yeah, that's a good one, dude. <laughs> I don't know. All sorts of stuff. There's all sorts of crazy stuff. But my, that was on my... the news. I did, not speaking about anyone particularly. But... No, no, no. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a story that we all have access to. You're just relaying it. Gotcha. Most certainly. Um, the news boys. My brother told me. My brother told me one. It was like his first week. Uh, he got called to a very elderly woman's house, who was like bedridden and had some problem with her foot. And sure. he gets there and he looks at her foot and it has maggots living in it. And mm -hmm. he bandaged her toes and her foot, wrapped it up. And when they got to the hospital, they undid the bandages and all of her toes came off with the bandages. <laughs> and I thought that was, that was a pretty special yeah. story. That's pretty gross. Yeah, yeah. that is pretty gnarly. Um, is that, is that normal? Like, would that even be worth mentioning? Like to the doctors, Honestly, or was that just the kind of thing that'll just happen and people are just like, oh yeah, that happened, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not not really. I mean, it takes a lot for me to really be um, surprised, I guess. Uh -huh. A lot of the time, my cousin loves this stuff. He's an architect, so like, I'm yeah. like, you want to hear something super gross? So I'll try to remember certain things for him. Right. But to me, I would just be like, ew, gross. We had this lady who came in; she was super gross. And then I had <laughs> someone else come and help me, and I'm like, yo, you gotta help me out, like. Uh, we gotta like pretty much clean this grown woman up, you know. Oh my god! And um, she turns. Oh, we turned her over. She's too lazy to turn over. And uh, a cricket like jumped right out from like under her butt as uh -huh. she had been here for like thirty minutes. I don't know how this live cricket was like chilling under there. Oh my um, god! The girl who's helping me freaked out. She had such a bad time. Ugh. It's funny. Human beings, baby. Oh, it's good times. Yeah. Yeah. All um, right, dude. One Thanks, more man. Thing, one more thing. Um, yeah. Great movies that I that like gave me faith in like Hollywood, like you were saying with. Um, yeah, in was, Inception. The movie. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, Annihilation. I thought Annihilation. I haven't awesome. seen that. I gotta watch okay. that. That was okay. really good. It was really great in theaters. Like visually, I just thought it's like a really awesome movie. Cool. Cool. All right. Good. Thanks. Thanks for the right. And that never hit theaters, did it? That was just straight to Netflix. No, that right? one did. That one I saw in in theaters, and oh, I was good. really happy I did. That okay, one's cool. a good one to see. All right, dude. Cool, man. All right, done. Thanks, bud. Take care. Later. See you. Oh shit. Hang on. I'm gonna fucking kill these. These guys gave me a hard time the other day, so I don't want to die. How many, how many Twitch streamers do this? How many Twitch streamers do chats with their, like, like Discord chats? Is this normal? Did I just, like, discover a cool thing? It's common? Okay. Bummer. I was like, I, I, I've, I've found it. A decent amount? Okay, right, that's cool. All right. Who else we got? It's normal. Uh, Elks Zoman. Uh, none do it. As good as this. Uh, thank you, Pass It Left. Thank you. Flattery will get you everywhere. Uh, yo. Elks, Elks Zaman. Am I saying this right? Elks Zoman. L X Zoman. L X Z. I don't know how to say your name. I don't even know if you do, dude. Can you hear me? You have the muted thing. You, I think you're muted. If you're trying to talk to me, you're muted. There we go. There he is. What's up, dude? Oh, how hell yeah. I'm, I'm just chilling. I'm actually Fox Bones. You're, oh, what's up, man? All right. You're, you're, uh, so you're a very talented artist, and you work for the... You, you collect, you're a debt collector. Or no, am I right about well, that? Only, only sometimes. I'm actually uh, a manager of a storage locker facility, and so when people don't pay for their lockers, I lock them out and call them and be like, hey, so you know you can't get your stuff, right? You should probably come and pay that before we have to put it up for auction you know you should you should probably keep on top of this how often do people just lose their shit at you 
Oh, uh, <laughs> nobody gets to lose their shit in me, man. If, if they try, I'm just like, okay, so I've done a lot more customer service than you think. Like, uh, yeah, I'm the manager here, but I've worked the chat lines for Skip the Dishes and for Ashley and Dufresne and for, like, the Winnipeg Hospital lottery and, like, like just stupid shit. Where people you don't actually say that, though. Who would give a shit if you say oh, that? Like, absolutely. I don't care where you've worked. Cu what? Is that yeah? Well, no, I don't. I don't tell them straight up. Oh, okay. I, just, I have that that hardened inside of me. I'm just like, no, you you know, you entered into this. We both were very amicable. We both uh, made the lease out, and we both wrote it, and we agreed to all the terms. And now you're going back on it. So I'm really sorry, but this is how it goes forward. And if you don't listen like that, that really sucks, man. I don't want to do this. Please work with me so that we can. Work yeah, together. help me help but you. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no, I've uh, been loving the fucking streams. Absolutely. Thanks, dude. Yeah, but, um, um, damn, do you have a hot take? Do you disagree with yeah, me about Tenet? a movie? Um, I don't. I'm not 100 percent because like you haven't seen Tenant yet, and that one like I, I went to go see it just after my buddy showed me Dunkirk. He's uh, wait, you went to see it in a Nolan theater? Man. I did. Where I do you live? In, Peg, in Canada. Oh, you're in Canada. Okay, so it's not. It's not like it's different up there. Yeah, we actually uh, uh, apparently Manitoba was used as a model for a lot of places to try to like actually use social distancing and how businesses were supposed to go because we were the one of the first ones to come out of the whole lockdown earlier in the year do you even have to wear masks there um right now if you go out in public or you go to any places then yeah uh, if anybody if any customer tries to come into the office then i have to put on a mask but I, I i work from where i live which is really lucky like i get to live on site at this storage locker facility there's a whole apartment attached to the office and I, I just get to hang out and call people, and once I get done calling people and I don't do any yard work, or if I'm doing yard work, I listen to you guys, but otherwise I'm probably just chilling in my room, playing guitar, or doing some more sketches. You kind of sound like you've got it figured out, dude. I'm, I'm trying. I, uh, I, went for, I went through a lot of years uh, being kind of homeless, uh, sleeping on couches, uh, just doing like labor jobs wherever I could get it. I had a lot of bad anxiety for a super long time, it was just blowing up and kind of like breaking down whenever anybody like tried to put any of their like actual stock into me i was just like oh man i really appreciate that you see that i have potential i'm gonna let you down and i just kind of crumble and disappear and are I'm you on really the other glad. side of that now yeah i'm off it's it's so much better i mean what like, sure, what, what was the solution but it's great what was the um, solution not I don't actually know what the solution per se was. Like, really, what it what what happened when I was actually starting to when I was able to start working properly and like do full time for a while and get things going was my mom passed away a couple years ago. Sorry. And I had to try to take care of both of my younger sisters. Mm -hmm. And like, I was just like, well, uh, like, I'll, I'll try to make it work. I'll do the best that I can. But then we had upwards of like 14 people in our apartment all the time because there were addicts and junkies and people sl like sleeping in the hallways and like breaking in and i was just so tired of it i was just like you guys like i kind of like if this is who you want to hang out with like you guys can go live there and do that i'm gonna move in with my buddy who says that he's got a caretaker <laughs> who says that he's got what yeah he had a he had a caretaker position like at the uh -huh. place where I'm living and working right now, they were the co-managers before, and there was a lady who was working Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, she was just doing two days a week, but she had a kid, and she had a caretaker position somewhere else. So she didn't just go on maternity leave, she just quit this job and kept the other one. And so I was able to get to the Monday, Tuesday. I only pay subsidized rent, and the three of us all share food costs, so it's kind of like a little family thing going on right now. But uh, like besides that, I just try to make the most of my time throughout the week and everything like that, like watching the practice. I've been doing uh, audio work on different films, which has been super amazing. I uh, I got in with a couple people that were doing some just short YouTube things, like uh, like a series called Snake Pit um, and Captain Winnipeg. Those are some good little short like comedy things going on. I got to do some writing for them and operated the boom mic the whole time. Um, All right, let, let me ask you this, man. Um, do you have, were you going to correct me on a movie thing? I'm sorry to steer the conversation out of that, but I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to. Um, did I get something wrong? Were you going to come at me? Well, see, people were talking about Tenant, and like they were super upset that he was releasing it in the pandemic. And I totally understand that. Like, oh, great. Like, tell everybody to go out when nobody's really going to theaters. Mm -hmm. But to be straight up, like, theaters are absolutely dying. Like, they are completely dying. They're still open here, even though they ask people to have 
masks and protective stuff and like protective measures and stuff like that but like they're still open there's just absolutely nobody there they yeah. desperately want people to go in there and like i get that like they're gonna go under but at least i get to see like an imax with pretty much nobody in the entire theater yeah there was, like, five people when i went to go see yeah that's tough i know theaters are dying i also know people are dying um yes you know and it, it, yeah it's very it's very sad yeah, nobody um, wants I, movie theaters to you know vanish but i don't know man i mean priorities you know we're you got to think of yeah. it like we're in the war effort here you know oh, yeah. and um you know that's 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 one of my frustrations is like you know during world war ii and I, you know this is this is a very different crisis than world war ii obviously but like you know we were americans were able to like no one no one put up a fuss when we had to shut down the auto industry you know all factories yeah. were, were you make planes and bombs now that's what you do sorry and everyone was like yeah we get it like there's something bigger than us let's go and it's just kind of yeah. sad that like that unity and, and sense of purpose is like is, is gone and I, I agree it's sad that we don't have movie theaters yeah. but it's like you know we, we we need to like look at a bigger picture I, i'm hopeful you know that theaters will come back you know on the other side of this but we're not going to get to the other side if we can't start fucking thinking of other people actually yeah anyway. oh hell yeah no i'm totally i'm to i totally agree with you i totally yeah. agree with you my 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 one point that i actually wanted to call in about Tenant is that uh, as I was watching the film, there were so many like, and this was the first time I'm I've, I've, I saw the movie. Okay, this is the first and only time I watched it. But every like almost every scene, I was seeing glaring issues with audio or certain camera angles or like things left like like continuity errors or huh. you know that thing that people do when they have the two person camera like facing one on the left as they're walking facing the other guy on the right as they're walking and they cut mm -hmm. in between to show their reactions as they're speaking mm -hmm. there were two or three times when the main character and this woman were speaking that you can very clearly see that her limp her lips are not synced to her audio it's just like the the that's, footage of him looking at her and reacting that's kind something. of amazing because i mean say what you will about chris nolan but at the very least the dude is capable of executing the basics you know without cro and 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 film that is called crossing the line when you, when you fuck the access up you know so like two yeah. people across from each other are both looking left that's cuz you crossed the line you know on one of them yeah um, yeah. So what I what I heard that may explain that is uh, Nolan did a lot of films with his brother, and his brother was like really heavy into the uh, editing side and making sure that like the product like the end result of everything was good and like keeping track of everything. Uh, Tenant I've heard was the first film that he made without his brother. Well, I don't buy that. That's why there would be tech. First of all, I, I don't know that there are technical glitches. For, if I'm going to be totally honest, I'm I'm I, I'm suspicious, but. There are people whose job on set is to just pay attention to that thing. So that would never fall on a producer or director. There's a script supervisor, you know, there's like the yeah. DP, like all of these people need to make sure that you don't cross the line or that, you know, there's continuity errors and all that stuff. So it would be bizarre if like in the Chris Nolan machine, that sort of stuff fell to his brother. Like that's, that's, that wouldn't, I, that's not the case. Um, okay. But, but. I am interested to see it because, you know, I, I do know that one of the big criticisms of Dunkirk, and granted I have not seen Dunkirk, was that you couldn't hear what the fuck the actors were saying. I heard everybody complaining <laughs> about that. So, like, I, I wouldn't, I, I, you know, to your argument, I wouldn't put it past Chris Nolan to, uh, to fuck some shit up like that, you know, because he's done it before, supposedly. <laughs> anyway, all right, buddy. Thanks for hanging out, man. It's good talking to you. Keep those yeah, drawings up. You're really sure. good at it. Keep it up. Hell yeah, man. I took some more snaps yesterday. I'm going to be working on some sketches this week. Awesome, dude. All right, man. Thank you. All right. Later. Peace out, you guys. I'll keep watching. All right. Uh, okay, stupid kid. What's up, stupid kid? All right. I'm glad I didn't just get killed by that guy, because that, that can happen. That can happen. Stupid kid. What's up, dude? You're in, baby. All right, I'm gonna boot you, man. I'm gonna give you ten more seconds. Shit! All right, I was. Oh, there you go. What's up, buddy? All right, my bad. My bad, man. All good. So, I know a while ago you were saying that you had said you had said like, what was it? It was you thought Hateful Eight was worse than Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. 
I don't know how you enjoyed Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, I love, I, dude, I love you. Thank you for hopping on. This is what I want. Like, this is what, what I want. I want people like this. What movie did you watch? Because the movie I watched had like 10 minutes of plot in like the last 10 minutes. And You're the rest of it was just was just Brad Pitt and Leo DiCaprio just dicking around in a, in a you, dude you're to, you're first of all you're totally right you're totally right and and it's funny okay. because this is one of those movies like I, I can I cannot be like structure guy uh, with once upon a time in Hollywood because you're right like that movie like many Tarantino movies it, it's structurally fucked like and yeah, and that is sure. such a fair complaint about it and you're right I think the reason I loved that movie was because it was just like, I just look at it as like a collection of, of just little scenes that were just so funny to me. Like, I love Brad like, Pitt. I love Leo DiCaprio. Like that scene where Leo's in the trailer having a tantrum, to me that's like one of the greatest things I've seen in years. Like I just thought it was so hysterical. He's so good. Oh, you never see him doing that kind of stuff. There so, are some great moments great for moments, sure. Great like, moments. It's, it's not like a cohesive movie. You're right. It, like, it seems insulting to even call it a movie. You're right. You're right, dude. And 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 I I I I couldn't defend it on those terms. And and also, I'll do you one more. I'll come over to your team and I'll shit on it in one more way. The ending where they where they you know kill the the Manson family. It's like and they're just like oh hey let's party. First like, of all, that was not whatever. earned in any way. Like there's nothing you know a, a proper movie structure. Some choice that the main character makes in the first act needs to have some fucking payoff in the third act, right? Yeah, it was it just needs pure to, coincidence that they happened to live next to the fucking house that they live next isn't to. That, um, isn't that 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 gun theory? It's like... Uh, if you show a gun in the first act, you need to, it needs to go off in the go, third. Yeah. It's not that, but yeah. Yeah, they kind of did that with the flamethrower, but like, but like... Right, right. It's just... I don't know. No, like, there's, there was no I've had, character I've had a time growth. And a half. Yeah, I'm with you. And You're also... Welcome. Tarantino already did this in Inglorious Bastards where they kill Hitler. Yeah. You know, so he, it's yeah. like a, he's doing the same gimmick again, but for whatever reason, but, I loved it. I don't care. It was so satisfying. Like, Inglorious Bastards had such a better plot. It actually it had a plot. It wasn't just like uh just like two dudes driving around in a Camaro just just like I agree with Hollywood you, dude. For like, I, I like do two agree. Hours. I do agree. I feel like I lost two hours of my life watching that movie. And I think that's fair to me. I just, I just, I, I was so charmed by the, the, the acting and, you know, like the, the, that scene where like Brad Pitt's got the, the fucking spear gun on the boat and like, you know, he oh, edited yeah. before he pulled the trigger. I was just like, that's, that's why Tarantino's Tarantino. Cause oh, it was, that edit. That was great. I, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Like, but also, I've had this conversation with like, who were like alive at that point in time and they're they love the movie they're like oh it's the it's such a good tarantino movie it's so much better than his other ones and i'm like how there was 10 minutes of plot like there was no character development nothing uh -huh. changed i agree i agree i don't i don't get it and like i just i had to talk to you about that well you like, know you let's you like i i would i did like it and but you are right on every point you're making now the character development i and i'm not i haven't thought this through so this is just me kind of wondering out loud in real time could you argue that leo had character development because at the end he found self-acceptance you know this is a man right. whose entire sense of self-worth was wrapped up in his success in the entertainment industry and then by blowtorching these idiots he he's finally okay with himself uh, it's a little thin yeah but... yeah it's 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 thin but you know it's it's there and it's it's better than nothing I yeah give you that. but yeah. but but i hear you now tell me this dude you you better agree with me that the hateful eight is a piece of shit. I mean, it's not. It's by far not my favorite Tarantino movie, but I definitely take it. Wait, you, you? I lost you in the end there. You t you definitely take it what? I I take it over Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh wow, I couldn't disagree more. To me, hateful eight is just all the Tarantino trappings without the charm. Like. Once upon, in yeah. in, once upon a time in Hollywood had the trappings, but it had so much charm that it, it it balanced it out. But Hateful Eight is just like there's nothing clever or charming or there's I, I see no redeeming it's, qualities it's in that movie. It's what? a fishbowl movie. It it's a hundred percent a fishbowl movie. What's a like, fishbowl movie? What's you know, you have it's or it's a fishbowl episode. You know, it's like um like when everybody's trapped in a room until some something happens. Oh yeah like, yeah yeah. Like okay. uh, they, they did that on like uh the community. 
But like, mm-hmm. no, it's it's a fishbowl movie in a sense that like you know everything's happening in this one room. It's just got one. It's it's like uh, Reservoir Dogs kind of. It kind of it kind of made me think of Reservoir Dogs. Sure, I see the parallel. Because, like, it was all, like, just in the same room. Like, there was a betrayal. Like, you know, it was... I, I don't want to give any spoilers or anything. D- like, spoil away. Everyone's I, yeah, seen I, I, yeah, everybody's, yeah. everybody's seen it. It's been a while since I've seen it, but, like, it was... It, I don't know. It kind of... It felt to me like... Like, Django meets... Uh, Django Unchained meets Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. And that seemed like... That seemed cool to me. I like that idea. Yeah, I mean, if you describe a movie to me that way, I, I'm going to see it with enthusiasm, but I just don't feel like yeah. it was executed, you know? And I, I don't know how everyone else feels, but I, I loved Django. I thought it was Oh, my God, yeah. It was a phenomenal movie. Yeah. yeah. I, in fact, Ooh. I was like, I was watching Django, and I was like, dude, this is giving me, like, Kubrick vibes, you know? Like, that, where it's just, like, All it's right. so, and, and I know, that's a bold thing to say. But that like, is. That's very bold. I know. I know. But like, there's that scene where he's where he he's on the horse and he's wearing his like purple clothes for the first time, and it's just, and the re, like it just made me see, and maybe this is gonna speak to my my just lack of thought as a white person living in America, but like, I think that that movie made the horror of life in in the antebellum South so visceral in a way that I've never seen prior, where I, yeah. I you see it as as what it was, which was a horror scape. You know, like the woman yeah. in the box, his wife in the box, and just just the the complete apathy that these people had, like when the dogs like killed that, ripped that man apart. It was like, yeah, you know, I, I feel like these these shows and movies have never really shoved it down your throat in that way, and it was it was I thought it was just really amazing and refreshing. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a book recommendation. Uh, okay. Have you guys read The Underground Railroad? It came out a few years ago, like three or four years ago. And it is about, um, it is like a science fiction fantasy take on Antebellum South. And, and it imagines if the Underground Railroad were an actual underground train. And it's sort of like Dante's Inferno, whereas they're escaping the plantation. They're just going deeper and deeper into this apocalyptic hellscape that was the Antebellum South. And it is... It is so fucking good. Obviously, I know that, cranberry juice fanatic that the Underground Railroad was a real thing, but this this book treats it like it was a literal train. Um, that kind of sounds like um, I don't know if you've seen uh, Lovecraft Country. Have you watched I that haven't. Show? I haven't. Is it good? You should watch that because really? I have a good feel. Jordan Peele uh, directed it. Oh, he directed or he produced it? I don't think he directed. I, he, it. I think he he might have produced it, but yeah. like either way, his name's attached to it, and yeah. like yeah. I've never seen a be- I've never seen something I didn't like from Jordan. You've never seen something you didn't like from Jordan? Did I'm you never. Did you watch? Uh, well, I'm going to challenge you on that, and and, and okay. Jordan is a good friend of mine, and I feel bad saying this, but like um, <laughs> that Al Pacino Hunters show. Did you watch that and like that? Hunters? No. Is yeah. So watch that, and then come tell me if you like everything he's produced. All right, all right, all right. It's, all right, it's it, it, maybe it's not called Hunters. I can't even. I think it is though. Um, it's about like uh, hunting kids or something. It's it's about like these hipster kids that are like hunting Nazis in America after, you know, blah blah blah. Nate Black is eat my ass, you fucking douchebag piece of shit. Um, but uh, yeah, watch that show. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot, okay, and cool. uh, I'll come back, I'll come back tomorrow on the stream. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. Um, For sure. Yeah. It's called Hunters. I'm right. Chat. Chat just confirmed it. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. I'll, all right, I'll give that and Underground Railroad a shot. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for disagreeing with me. That's what I want more of. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Man. All right, dude. Happy to do it. Later. All right. That was good. Take me to task, people. I don't. I don't want people to agree with me. Uh, beans fervor. I'm almost done, by the way. I think I'm going to hop off here in the next 15 minutes. You got beans. Yeah, you got beans. All right, what's going on, dude? Not too much. Uh, so continuing where we left off, uh, the uh, the Dark Knight stuff, uh, after that... Oh, wait, did you already? were you already on? Forgive me, I cannot keep the name straight. Did, you, did we talk earlier today already? Yes. Okay, yes. okay. All right, keep going. Um, no worries at all. Um, but uh, one of the guys that came on afterwards was talking about a nurse story. So I had a story for my uncle who was a nurse oh, uh, that I love. Me. Hit me. All right. So my uncle was a nurse back in the day in the ER. Uh, this is like the 80s, and uh, video games were just kind of coming into popularity. My uncle was always cool, 
so he had all that shit, knew what all of it was, um, particularly liked Zelda, like, a lot. So, one day this guy came in, uh, and he had, like, literally broken his dick. Uh, not sure exactly, you know, the, the condition he was in, but apparently he was just a belligerent asshole to the entire nursing staff as he came in. Okay. And he's going, he's going... I, I I can't believe this shit, you know, like, uh, I got I got my wedding tomorrow. He literally had his wedding tomorrow. And <laughs> he's screaming at my uncle, who's like the head uh, head charge nurse in the ER. So my my uncle comes in and explains to him, like, okay, so, uh, tell you know, tell me what happened. How'd you, how'd you do this? Um, and the guy uh, tells him, so you know how when you're uh, just sitting around and you just, you get like a huge boner when you sit in one place for way too long? That's and not that's not how nurse. my body works. Is that how your body works? Not me. No. no. I mean, uh, you know, there was a time, but not not now. Yeah. Um but my my uncle being like a nurse, you know, was like, "Well, no, you know, it's a reaction that you're having to like, uh, you know, it, it, he explained it to him like medically like what it actually was." And the guy just kind of breezed through that and he was like, "Yeah, well, I was playing <laughs> I was playing The Legend of Zelda and uh I I don't know what it was, but I just didn't get up for like 2 days." And I just kept on playing and kept on playing. And, uh, like, it just stayed in that position so long that eventually when I tried to get up, like, I could, like, it was, it was broken. So my uncle is like, oh, okay. And he's like, so we're going to have this fixed by tomorrow. My uncle's like, well, no. Like, the process for this is basically we have to, you know, go back, kind of peel the skin off of your penis, set it. Oh, my get God. Get everything back and then, you know, put it back up. This is, you know, this is going to be a whole thing. And the guy's like, you know what, fuck you, like, you're just a nurse, get me a doctor, get me a doctor. So my uncle's like, okay, so he goes and gets the doctor, and the doctor comes in, and he just says to the guy, all right, so tell the doctor what you just told me. And he goes through the whole story, you know, sat in one position, broke my dick, you know, uh, all that shit, and <laughs> finally gets around to, like, you know, so, you know, is this going to be, like, are we going to be able to do something for my wedding tomorrow? And my uncle just turned to the doctor and goes, like, see, I told you he was a fucking moron. Because he's getting married? No, because he went and oh, he told oh, the doctor. Oh, 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 okay. I thought, I thought there was a punchline there that was, like, deeper than just, like, he's a moron because he, he, he broke his dick. Um, yeah, that sounds like a maniac. Yes. So, wait, is that the end of the story? That, that is, as far as I know, the end of the story. <laughs> I like the story. It just I, you, Your rhythm at the end made me think there was, like, there was a different ending to the story. I'm sorry, man. Um, no, that no, is, you're good. That is so fucking crazy. How did he break his dick? Can I tell you? My friend broke his dick, actually. That sucks and, ass. And I'll tell you how he did it. He was, like, he was like 13 years old, and uh, he was in the shower. And, you know, he's super horny. He's, like, he's 13. So he takes the cap off of a shampoo bottle and he starts fucking the shampoo bottle. And I guess it was really tight, like a vacuum, like it's sealed, you know? And, and he couldn't get it off. And he like, he, he could oh, not geez. for the life of him get this bottle off of his dick. And he finally, he pulled it off really hard and his dick came out and like, it seemed okay, it was very red. And he said the next day, he looked when he woke up. He looked down. His dick had spots all over it, and it sh it like shed its skin. Oh! Like he like killed. I guess he that, hickeyed his dick so much that it like yeah. It's, that's a reaction to yeah. the um whatever the shampoo or conditioner was. That happens to people all the time, apparently. Oh, are you it's kidding? I thought it was from the suction. I think in his case it was probably both, but it definitely like people have uh, I've I've seen things on. <laughs>